and the pathways over the orient corner that are ADA compliant that busy section of the park actually that um, make it easy for people to access the park you know there's cuts in the curb there for wheelchairs and such and so people can easily access and because um, I guess our reputation for being very dedicated to Harbor Island Park, Westchester County had asked us to do the uh, native garden for them. Actually, they just asked us to do a garden. We decided it ought to be a native uh, garden. And right now it's in full length. So if any of you who have a chance, drive into the organic section and just, you're going to just be in awe of the uh, flowering that's going on right now. Actually, I've been seeing a lot of bumblebees and other insects, but there's a lot of milkweed as well. So we're hoping that the monarchs find it. Next slide, please. This is the area we're talking about, the uh, Oriana section um, of um, Parker Island. And you can see the garden there that, that you're looking at. You can't really see the pathways very well there, but that was a project that we did for the village practically 15 years ago. It still looks pretty good at this point. The pathways especially, I'm amazed that they've held up as well as they have. Next slide, please. This is the other side of that wall. And that little patch of green grass is where we're talking about putting this, we just call it the proposed garden, but we really do want it to be a very serene, quiet place. <laughs> for people to just relax and enjoy the park. You can see it's not a large space and it's what we consider a very underutilized, but a very heavily uh, trafficked area because it's easy for people. I'm glad you can see the, the pathways here because these are pathways that are very easy for people with baby carriages and wheelchairs and whatever to uh, enter the park. Next slide, please. Um, this is a drawing that kind of shows the layout of the park. We wanted to give you kind of an idea of what it would look like. The um, gardens, of course, are emphasized, but what we actually are going to be doing in this uh, area is extending the pathways, I think it's called flaring, where uh, when you're in a wheelchair with a baby carriage, you really do want an easy turn rather than a 90 degree. And so what you see there is just an artist rendering, but what we're trying to do is to provide ADA access for all ages and capabilities. And also this um, hardscape will be permeable. We do want to keep as much moisture in the ground as possible. Um, the wall that, that you saw in the previous, um, yeah, that wall. You can see it has a bit of an art to it. And so what we're going to do is, uh, um, yeah, thanks, Dan. Going back, you can see um, there's a round bench that just is inside that wall. And we're going to tuck that bench in there as easily, as, as close as we can, because the wall will actually provide some shade for- That's just like a semicircle, right? It, yeah. It's uh, about 18 feet across. Um, and it, uh, never have been a fabulous company that has the best benches you could ever imagine. They're so comfortable that will do an 18 inch uh, art uh, bench um, that will go in there. We happen to have somebody from the tree committee here that's going to tell you about of the plantings that you see there. Yeah, the two that um, where it's going to include native plants, pollinator plants. Um, and then two red bud trees, which are a, a smaller native plant, very, very popular with pollinators. And since we have a lot of oaks in the area already, and those are fabulous close plants, pollinators at certain stages of their lives, we're creating the layers. So we have the big trees and then the two small red buds, and then we'll have all of this ground cover and maybe spinning around. So before we leave this slide, I want, to, I want you to notice there's two little brown things <laughs> that are, are uh, in the front or, or the lower section of that park. And those are what we call just flat boulders, rocks. 
that the kids can play on. If any of y'all have been over to the, the Constitution Park there across from the Larchmont Library, you're going to see uh, they put these kind of flat boulders, and the young kids love them. I'm not sure exactly why, but they do. <laughs> so, but like I said, we're trying to make this park for everyone, all ages, all capabilities. Next slide, please. This was an artist rendering <laughs> of, uh, of the park that one of our board members, um, Laura Haas, did for us. And um, sainted memory. No, I didn't. Um, this was just a few weeks before she passed away. But what we wanted to do in our railing for the um, end of the year fundraiser, we highlighted this and um, Nora, will you pass sure. these down so that the sure. the uh, if I think you can get a little better idea of how the bench is and, and how you're looking at what I really want you to see in this one is this spectacular view that you get from just sitting and this is a very quiet, serene area of the park. Next slide, please. The type of uh, hardscape that we're going to be using so that uh, we have room for the, like a wheelchair to, to uh, turn around and, and see the water or for anyone, baby carriage especially. You can see that it's just level, uh, similar to the pathways coming surrounding that area, but it just has enough interest to make it not as monotonous as just a regular sidewalk looking walkway. But again, permeable surface so that we can retain water and um, keep a very healthy space. Next slide. Again, just a more little different um, positioning, but we're trying to use the two, two different colors. So I thought I'd give you a little idea of how a walkway with going into that space that you just saw before would look. Next slide. Those are the boulders. <laughs> the one on the right is probably more like what you would the two, like the two that you would see. But we're just going to put those with uh, loose river rock. River My rock. friend loves river rock. But you know, something that's very smooth. So Did you say river rock? River rock. It's so. Uh, no more. You're right. Yeah. But very smooth so that children know where they're going to hurt themselves. Yeah. Next slide. Oh, river rocks. <laughs> well, those two aren't exactly the rocks, but you can see kind of how it would look. It, and it's an area that, could, you know, the children would use. There wouldn't be any need for anyone to walk through there with a, a wheelchair or a baby carriage. Next slide. Redwood trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the, the trees, the two trees that would be on the side that would eventually provide more shade for the bench area. Next slide. And as Beverly mentioned, we're just going to be using uh, ground cover. And um, I just happen to have a list of about 17 different varieties of native, uh, what they call um, ground cover, that we can fill in around. And so the purpose of doing this not only is to have a native plant, that plant garden that would complement what we did with the county that's very nearby. But we also want to have a maintenance-free park so that Jeff, the manager of the park, is going to love us because he no longer has to mow this or weed whack it. We're actually making life for Jeff a little easier with this type of uh, uh, artscape and, and landscape. Next slide. Just more uh, pictures of, of the ground cover that would be in that area. And last of all, this is the pollinating garden that we did for the county. And you can see the rock wall right behind. So you can see how close these are. So any insects that want to go over there to that one can just buzz right over to ours and continue on their good work. Next slide. You know, Marinick is pretty much single handedly saving the monarch butterfly. That amazing. I've seen a lot of milkweeds. So what we're asking the village to do tonight is to approve this um, plan. It's fully funded. 
We are a nonprofit organization. 100% of the funds that we raise go for the park. We're all volunteers doing the best we can <laughs> to uh, make the park as beautiful and as useful as it possibly can be. So tell me about the timeline for getting it done. <clears throat> How does it work? You guys would give us the approval tonight. I've already got the bench company and the Heartlands hardscape people ready to go. I'm, I'm just uh, waiting on approvals. 100% funded. Um, I want to ask the board. I would be fine with putting this, adding this to tonight's regular session agenda, which I move it forward. Is yeah. that? That's right, because they talked about it a little bit last they week. They talked about it a little bit last week. Not last week, but previous. Previous. Previously on a village of America. Yeah, I'm okay. all right. Everybody okay, okay. moving okay. that tonight? Yeah, I have, one, I have two questions though. One, where this is sort of to the west of the, west the essential workers tribute. I know it hasn't, but I'm just saying. Did we met with Sam, the Arts Council. Well, it wasn't, but it wasn't the Arts Council's idea. It was the it was the board's idea, and I don't know if the board. Can you give context to what you're saying. So oh. during 2020 and then more in 2021, there was a proposal to do an essential workers tribute, which I think is not in the same location as this. It's more it's not to, in the same location. More to the east. Yeah. The, I mean, to the west. It, it, the it's, it's up. I think it's changed several times. Yeah. And I'm not sure. There is a question. No, there isn't. Originally, it was more to the tree mm -hmm. farther along. Right. Mm -hmm. So you lost a lot of trees in Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I think there was some conversation about maybe incorporating it in this park, but that hasn't. So I, all, my question is, there's no, there, these are not mutually exclusive. They're not in separate no. areas and they're, I just, I just, no, wanted, to make, I just wanted to clarify that they are neighbors. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that that's, that's it has correct. To talk with the Arts Council. I guess it was a conversation we had with the village manager that, um, um, Dan, can you find the, the picture of the uh, the park again for me? Yes, and did go right back. Go back in. Go back. Go back, back down, 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 down. There. Now keep going. One more time. There you go. Um, and Nora, you can see in mm -hmm. the very bottom, mm -hmm. there's a little round thing there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we obviously can put we can plant something there but what we would like to do if, if um the arts council or the village would like is to do uh have that space set aside for a uh, memorial well i mean i think you know i think that the, the the tribute was something the board of trustees had asked the arts council to look at and then because there was a lot going on it the, they worked with the tree committee and with the conservancy to come up with a plan and it was just never funded by the village. So I don't know that it's off the table yet. I mean, but I, I just wanted to make sure that this, this proposal is in the, that I, just, no, I wanted to clarify because I got a couple of questions over the weekend. So I just want to clarify that they're no, separate no. locations. But they're not mutually might, exclusive. I mean, we can always put mm -hmm. a plan there, but one of the things I thought would be nice since it's a very visible walkway, mm -hmm. if we were going to be doing a memorial, that would be an excellent viewing spot for people to see. And it's just sitting there, but mm -hmm. it's really up to whoever. But we did leave a lot of flexibility in this plan in case that was a, an option. An option, okay. Well, well let's, let's do one project at a time. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's okay with putting this on for the regular agenda? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I guess I have one more question. So it, you're fully funding it, which is very nice and thank you. And um, what I guess we should check with the Parks Department what their resources are for maintaining it. Uh, I've already checked with uh, Jeff and Jason, and they're both in favor of it. As 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 uh, June pointed out, Jeff uh, feels that it'll be less work for the Parks Department than what's currently there now. Okay. There should be no maintenance. Uh, our Island Conservancy has always kind of watched over our the gardens that we've done, and done a lot of weeding in there too. Mm -hmm. But this with the ground cover and with the limited amount of space that will be actually used for plants, we cannot imagine there being much maintenance at all. I might pull a few of that mugwort out of there, but that'd be about it. 
that oh, all of the plantings would be perennials, mm -hmm. unless we just stick an annual in there to just give it a little color during some of the downtime for mm -hmm. the, the perennials. But as far as, as um, maintenance, I, I really don't see any. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. Beverly, you okay with it? Yes. <laughs> I also checked with Beverly today, too. <laughs> All flora and fauna. I checked with Beverly. Uh, okay, so that's going to be on the regular meeting. If you, if you want to come back at the regular meeting. Yes. You know, well, you don't have to, but, you know. Um, I, I have to come back anyway. Okay. All right. Unless, uh, it's nice to explain at the regular meeting, because the public doesn't always watch this meeting. They watch the regular meeting. Okay. It's nice to let people know. What we're doing. I usually do. Uh, the next up, I'm going to call uh, Damon Yeiser. Uh, Mr. Yeiser wants to talk about a memorial uh, to our friend and, uh, and a great village resident, Keith Yeiser. Hello, Mr. Yeiser. This, this is something that came up uh, soon after uh, Mr. Yeiser passed. Uh, and I guess that's a couple of years ago. Yeah, two, years, two years ago. Right. So this was a, this was an idea that's uh, been germinating uh, for a long time. Laura. Oh, sorry. oh okay. I'm up on three years. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Uh, first of all, I can thank the board for giving me this chance, this opportunity to revisit something that we did two years ago. Uh, just to recollect, uh, back in May of 2021, uh, we met with the board of uh, myself and uh, the gentleman, Matt Nagel. At the time, we were closed until we had it resumed. Uh, and we asked for approval to do a pavilion for my brother, Keith Geisler. Those who don't know who he was, an uh, icon in this community. Both like born and raised, just like our family has been here. And, um, he passed away suddenly. At the time, we were trying to figure out something we could do because he spent a lot of time, especially in the Washingtonville area, indoor or around it, because we did work around the heights. We wanted to do something just so that his legacy and his memory would be uh, here for a lifetime. And um, we came to the board, we asked for approval to do a pavilion. We were approved uh, to do this back in uh, in the summer, or toward the end of the summer of uh, 2021. But Hurricane Ida came along and uh, it actually uh, deterred all of our plans to do the pavilion. So we backtracked it and at the time too. Um, I know there was some talk about the uh, dredging of the uh, river, because this provision will be at Columbus Park, if you're familiar with Marion and Columbus Park, on the Whitefield area by the train station. Uh, the location that we actually picked was uh, the free side, and it was uh, by way of the small basketball court, if you saw Columbus Park, small basketball court. And one of the reasons why we picked that area or get the approval for it was look at the time we were talking about even before I came along about trying to do the ace I don't know if it was the ace project or whatever ace project, yes. yes to um lengthen the uh river so the pavilion would be on the far side closer to the street side on the far side so it will not affect that not one bit because uh, we looked at what they would try to be doing you know and uh it doesn't seem to be a problem even if they decided to maybe be far away from that area to do it. And um, what we're asking for is just approval to uh, restart the project that we had uh, for two years ago. Is, has, is the project funded? Yes, the project is, is privately funded. Um, the only request that we have um, that we asked the village is to help with the um, footing and cement pad. Um, there, yeah. all of the labor and the material will be paid um, by by us. Can I ask a question, Mr. Yaza? Yes, sir. Because that area floods so much, uh, would it be possible 
to, I mean, I understand that the concrete footings for the columns has to be poured in, but could it be possible that the surface, and this might be something that we could talk to our engineer about, who's sitting right here tonight, uh, the surface be uh, a permeable surface to allow water to infiltrate? Yes, well, yeah. that, that, was, that was, um, I got right, sorry, I got that one. Yeah. That was part of the time. I've been, um, you know, well, working and talking with Jeff on and Jason. Okay. About it. That's why we were asking for the cement has to build to help because that way, you know, whatever's needed can be done. Okay. And the pavilion, structural wise, everything else, we would take care of. Okay. Gina, you, know, you see what I mean, right? Yeah. You want to be under the um, yeah. tree, you want to make that. Platform, the walkway, paper. Yeah, paper. Paper. Yeah, and I, but obviously the columns have to be poured into a, a mold. Yeah. And, and also, too, I said, um, we also have to, has to be done a little deeper so that, you know, because if it does put a rain, not say fall away, but damage up, it will not mm -hmm. really structure the uh, project there. So it'll be something that will be heavily done. And that's the point where it will never be a problem. No, I just was curious. To, and this is like I don't know who can answer this question. Is there? Can you? Can we have a permeable? Can we have a permeable surface that the benches and stuff are on, or is that not? Would that work? I mean, it's going to be concrete. Mm -hmm. Would it be raised at all? I just I'm, I'm not I'm not understanding how it's permeable. It looks like it's raised. What, what, what do you, go ahead, Gina. Well, you, you put a Gina? So any type of pervious surface that you have, whether it's pavers, concrete, it's not really a high traffic area, it's walking area. So yeah. we're probably not going to be subjected to these mm -hmm. heavy loads. So the uh, maintenance is, uh, or the, the longevity is going to last a lot longer. But the floor uh, of the pavilion would be, would, would need to be strong. I mean, it wouldn't be pervious is what I'm- No, well, you could make it pervious, why not? I mean, I mean, that's the question I'm asking. Yeah, you pervious. Okay. That's why I started the conversation. Right. Yeah. Well, that was part of our plan because building structure like this, you know, especially this is the area where it could, that was one of the major things that was one of the problems we had in the beginning with it because the fact of the company, you know, with the basin and stuff. So since the village knows exactly what it is, that's the only thing we're asking for, you know, the build to help along. And and the soft tool open structure, as you see, so it's there. The uh, benches and stuff will be uh, movable. It'll be heavy benches. It'll be movable just in case if you want to, as you look at it, the way it's structured, um, you want to hold a concert on a bench. Because the way it looks here on the picture, it's going to be actually more of a 90 degree angle. It's not going to, as you can see here, this is stretching out with the end of it towards the river. This end is going to be more, I can say, this way. Kitty so corner. Yeah. Well, the kitty corner, or it would be when you when you walk from the street, you can walk right up into it. So the, the end part. And right now it's um it's about 15 by 30 by 30 that we have. So when we can space it out and it's 20, because actually it's only been 20 by 40. But you know, the cost and everything else that we're trying to do, we're trying to keep it uh, reasonable. And as we said before, we have the funds, you know, started into end the project. So it's not gonna be a problem. We also are working with the uh, CDC, community Re CRC, which yeah. is community resource center, because they're the ones that are holding our funds and everything else. So we're five minutes. How much uh, money do you have? We have we have forty five thousand oh. dollars. Okay, we, we have enough to, to get it. And uh, right now, talking with Jeff, and, and uh, we're looking at a, a, a different plan of, of material to use. You know, for the structure part of it. Which is a strong one. I don't know if you look in at the park at the far end by Miranda Avenue, have a little gazebo over there. That's before we were going to get a strong wooden roof, but we actually talked around that roof is just as strong and that's a little cheaper. So that's what the cost of price down. And we do have, like I guess, a private funding way that if it does go with more than we need, it's not going to be a problem. You know, with it, you know, we can guarantee. I can tell you, we can guarantee up to hundred thousand dollars if we need it. We can and uh, key part of this is that this pavilion. Uh, what we also talked about too is when it's completed and done, 
it will be uh, managed and run by the village. It means that because the size of it, people would like to use it and everything. So it's going to be more of like most towns, you're going to need a permit to use it on certain days so that you don't have problems with people just rolling up and trying to do things like that. We're going to have a little area where you can outside as a pavilion where you can, you know, barbecue grills and everything else. We're not allowed to. Barbecue in any village park. Okay, well, you know that, that was a possibility. It's not. No, I, 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 yeah. I, I want to get get ahead of it before we. You get, okay, you know, no, that could be that, that's yeah. even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save a couple thousand dollars. Hey, you know, I, you know, certain parks no, can. I, no, I, 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 I don't want to rain on your parade. Yeah, but no, I don't wanna, yeah. It wasn't really like I said, that was just an additional thing. I mean, okay. to me, you know, hey, it's more self sufficient. Um, if it's not one there, you don't have to worry about a lot of the. Other stuff, yeah, so you know, one plane you know, and everything else, and stuff, so, you know. And uh, that's about you know what it is because we were approved, but like I said, things happen. We're just coming back. We really want to start this project and try to get it done. Probably, if we can start, you know, the uh, construction guys are probably thinking about six to eight weeks. So, if really? we get, so if we, yeah, yeah, I mean, it can be done quicker, but that's just the, the rent, you know, when you're. Yeah. You have to make stuff. You don't want to say, you know, four right. weeks. And then, you know, it could be four weeks. You know how I mean, it could be fast, but, you know, that was kind of the range that they gave us to talk about. And we want to try to get this done um, before the middle of the fall. You know, you know, if we can get it done quicker, quicker we get approved, quicker we can ground break, you know, dirt and everything, we can get this all uh, moving. So you've been, you've been talking to Jeff and uh, Jason? Yep, I've been talking to Jeff, and uh, Jeff has been, has been dealing with, uh, the village manager, uh, Jerry, everything else about it. And then to the, you know, the planning, um, the building inspector, Mrs. Fonseca. Uh, She's right there. Right there. Okay, all right. Nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you. You know, Jeff has been my front man because, you know, he knows the park areas and stuff like that. And everything else. And he knows construction. Yes, and that's the key part. And uh, I've seen the work that was done actually when I was here last time. I was up at Jefferson, Jefferson Avenue mm -hmm. Park to do that. And we might even use that type of uh, Mm -hmm. Format the first. I met the young man up there in the beginning of the structure. Okay. There. And that was kind of changed. It was, you know, good look at it. it was a wooden structure. It's a little more, it's nice, but it's a little more expensive. So, Mr. Yazi, you're here tonight to ask the board uh, for approval to continue with with the, this plan that we already said was okay a couple of years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, yeah. we just want to get pre approval and just, you know, uh, get this thing going. You know, we can. The, um, uh, one question I have, do we know enough about what the Army Corps has planned there that uh, we be sure we won't be getting in their way because we don't want to do anything to slow them down? I'm not exactly sure where that situation, where, where that would be. Is this kind of- uh, It's more closer to the street. Actually, you know, you know, we got this move going in terms of the yeah. Yeah. Feet from where that, so yeah. 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 I think we could probably yeah. share a generic location with the core yeah. to see if it's properly cited. Yeah. And if we need to relocate it, we can well, review that I, with. I, I would suggest that uh, perhaps the village manager and Gino and Mr. Yeiser uh, meet down in the park and just uh, walk through it. Because sometimes uh, we're visual learners. And Gino might know right off the top of his head because I know you're very, you're very uh, briefed on the Army um, Corps plan. So why, why, don't, why don't you work with Gino and as you've been doing? And Godspeed to you. And do, I mean, because it's a structure, I guess it's considered a structure in in, in the flood zone. Does it have to go to? Do we have to do seeker? And does it go because we're approving it? And does it go to HCZM? Are those two requirements, Bob? Uh, would, it, would this would 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 the pavilion need to um, we would need HCZM to do seeker and it would need to go to HCCM if we're approving a project that's a structure and I don't know I mean Carolina you, would you think about that I just if we're going to do it I just want to know now not in a month or two months I want to like get the give you a picture I'll give it back because you're probably a visual learner so. <laughs> I mean, I just, if we have to do it, we should have it yeah, no, through I, at the beginning. Now, I don't want to delay anything. You know, that's, that's the issue. A lot of things have changed. 
you know, in two years. So, you know, <laughs> my thing is to make sure that everybody's on point and once we start this project, because we can start to finish it. I want to start the project and then after we do the project, you know, something we didn't think about doing. So to me, I waited two years. You know, I just want to, because of, of, you know, us having the availability, everything else, because who knows, I don't want another item to come along and, mm -hmm. you know, and then we do another two more. Yeah, it's a really nice benefit and amenity for the park, and it's a really nice way to remember. Well, it's, it's, it's a nice um, it's a nice way to remember. Well, really, you know, that's a great one. I grew up, that's where I grew up, you know, from this park, you know, before we moved up, but even still there, you know, and, uh, it's always been a great place. One of the things that's with black, it was always a nice barbecue area that you had. We used to go out there in the old days with barbecue. Nobody, you know, nobody never bothered you because you couldn't get ahead of our business. And that was it. Now we have rules and regulations. You know, no propane, you know, grills, you know. Back then, hey, nobody never complained. I mean, we used to play baseball, everything else on that field. But as time went on, things have changed. So, you know, it definitely has. And it's more things to be done. And plus, this would be a great thing for the community. People well. who live there in the area. Now they have a place where they can go. They can gather. It doesn't have to even be a barbecue. Okay, it just be a place. Well, I mean, that's not out of the question for the future, but uh, uh, if there was a special permitting process uh, uh, approved for barbecues, but uh, but right now it's, it's a no go. But uh, this this looks terrific. It looks terrific. So what, what do we do, uh, Mr. Yiza? The village manager's office will tell you what the next step is. Uh, I think everybody in this board is fine with you moving forward. Uh, I think that Lonnie, you're you're gonna sit this, Lonnie's sitting this one out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's a great idea, unless unless I'm, I'm speaking out of turn. But I think the whole board. No, is, I, I'm 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 very enthusiastic. It's, it's a great idea. Thank you for speaking. Okay. So, well, I will put this way: we've had funds over the last two years, and people actually we have more people because what we are what we were planning to do is not only uh, using the funds for the uh, the uh, pavilion, scholarship. whatever that, like, yeah, it was going to be scholarship because of for, for, the, for the children who are residents out in the area, you know, close to the CRC, or whatever, you know, kids who live in the Washington area, you get those scholarships, stuff like that. Now, now, other than the, the name on the, on the uh, on the pavilion, would there be some sort of plaque or? Oh, or yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, we're going to have plaques, you know, um, we have some people already who, who want to donate. You know, benches might have certain names on them. You sure, know, sure. Oh, good, good, good. So, you know, there'll be a plaque. It'll be there probably, as you see what it says, in the front, it'll be on both sides, Keith, so you can look at it. And we'll have a plaque there, similar to the one that they have for uh, Mr. Carrington. Uh, All right. Oh, by the basketball. basketball, yeah. Okay. So people will know, you know, when they go there, you know, who keeps their eyes on the other one. You're not going to have no mind of it. What's the, this? That was that was barbecue. Barbecue. Really, that was yeah. That was just a, you know when we did the uh, uh we just drew something that made it because yeah. what you see there is just part of it. I mean, it's not. It's going to be exactly. I was separate. wondering if it was going to be a, like a little tribute, and I put that on. Yeah. Okay. But it's a great. Like I said, so you can the, the benches are movable. You want to have a concert there, or whatever stuff like that, because we're supposed to be able to. Uh, you know, I think we're mostly at. We might be able to get a much lights in there, stuff like that. So, so and, we're at, and we do have at, at the uh, at the yes, at the rock. Mm -hmm. Well, those two, you have light pole there too. We have yeah, one, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then, I don't know if it was proved on yet. I was heard at one time they were going to cut down uh, either trim or two of the trees that were there. Two of the trees, are, two of the big trees are gone. Are they gone? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of the, one of the situations. Okay. Right, that's right out your back door, then. Yep. Yeah. But now you must Friday concert. Yeah. Now you have a nice yeah. place where you can, you know, sit on the grass mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, or bring the uh, trailer. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you, much, sir. Thank you. So just continue. Hold on. Well, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, Mr. Sposino wants to weigh in. Thank you. May I just answer the, answer the question that Trustee Lewis asked? It would require uh, advisory consistency from HDZMC. So as soon as you think it's in the proposal in sufficient detail, you might want to send it to HDZMC. Yeah. 
for advice. Uh, Got advice okay. because okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, thanks. Okay. So, Mr. Yazid, uh, Gino and uh, Dan will be your your your, your uh, point Thank people. You. Thank you very much. And uh, there's nothing else we need to do to move it to the agenda. Or no, 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 right. Okay. Don't use the email. We, we, we approved it. Okay. Fair view. That's probably before you got here. Yes. Uh, the next up is we, we uh, the budget committee presentation. I, I asked the budget committee. Uh, a while back uh, to look at uh, whether it was financially uh, feasible uh, to merge our court with the two town courts, uh, thereby saving the taxpayers money. And they did a uh, discussion uh, with the, the village of Fort Chester, in fact, it should be the city of Fort Chester. Uh, and they have their findings tonight. And I guess to present is uh, Lynn Aubrey. Of the budget committee. Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the other members of the budget committee who worked on this, two are here this evening. Uh, Ellen Huffman, um, Glenn Tippett, um, Charles Guadagnolo, Guadagnolo's uh, chair, uh, Ed Zagaleski, uh, who's also on the committee, and Catherine to put they could not attend at this time. Um, as the mayor said, we were asked to look at the possibility of essentially combining our courts with the two town courts, town of Rye and Cumming. Uh, um, once we got into this, we found there are a number of factors that would affect the financial benefit, potential financial benefit that would um, possibly come to the village. So what I'd like to do is to walk through those and then to share with the board and those watching um, our recommendations. First, what we found was important to consider is the circumstances of the other towns. And in addition to talking to the treasurer of the um, uh, of Worcester. Uh, we also spoke to the former mayors of Austin and Tuckahoe. Now, those two um, villages went through considering court consolidation. Um, Tuckahoe did not go forward with it, and Austin, which did go forward with it. So we thought we would find out the experiences. Who would you talk to from Austin, Victoria Garrity? Uh, no, no, we spoke to Bill Hanauer, who was the mayor of Austin when this occurred. It was back in 2012. So the Austin courts merged in 2010. The village with the town mm -hmm. back in 2012, I think it was. Um, and we heard their experiences, and I'll share them with uh, the board um, as we go through the various factors that we had to evaluate as we went through this. Um, the first one is what we'll call the circumstances of each of the different towns, which is important as it turns out to the finances of, the, um, of such a merger. Now, in um, Rye Town in Porchester, the courts and police are in the same building. Um, in Austin, the town hall and village hall are in, is in one building, and the courts and police are located a short distance away from, from, um, from that, that facility. In the case of Tuckahoe, which I think everyone knows is a much smaller village, certainly from the Maranac in Austin, and and Tom Ryan and Porchester, excuse me. Um, but they're very proximate as well. Um, and why that's important is because um, the police court proximity is very important um, because of the work that is done um, by both of those um, organizations together. Um, in the case of the town of Mamaroneck Court is about, as everyone knows, not too far from here, 
about a little less than a mile. The town of Ryeport is, to be exact, about 5.7 miles from here uh, to the town of Ryecourt um, on local streets, which takes some time. And um, I think when this board heard from Chief DeRusa during the, during the budget hearings, um, and quite frankly, much to our surprise, I think that the village's memory serves me correct, about the third busiest, third busiest, <laughs> busiest town or village and town, uh, police department uh, in Westchester County. And you may all also all recall that the number of arrests is about 416 a year. Um, part one crimes had grown from 200 in 2020, 2020 I think it was, to about 275 or so on the most recent year. So we've seen an increase in what are called the part one crimes, the most serious crimes. Now that, that is important for the court because prisoners and others are arranged and then brought here to this room um, to be arraigned. They're booked and then arraigned here. And um, one of the concerns that we found was that the actual physical transport in the police, um, um, that number of police that would be required to move those who required a great deal of security to the two separate town courts. So proximity was is very, very important to us. Um, now, also, there's other department effectors, maybe the building department, to the extent the building department goes to court for various building violations. That's a, another issue. We didn't explore that one in, in any detail. Um, we also heard um, after we got the email from the mayor, we had a meeting with the town uh, village, village justices um, um, Justice Derrico and Gallagher, I think Gallagher is here this evening. And, we, and they shared with us their thoughts and um, um, important considerations that we should make. First is the, um, the types of cases they handle, which I think this board is well aware of. Um, they handle the civil, and obviously criminal cases, but also are very involved in um, um, landlord tenant disputes, um, um, small claims up to $3,000 and um, judgments on rent disputes, irrespective of the amount of money there. And the judges justices also made a key important point to us about the non-judicial necessarily aspects of their job, meaning referrals to social services agencies, their, um, their ties to the community and trying to work with the, um, um, those who come before them, before them and sort of guide them through services that to services they may need um, beyond the courts. Um, now, initially that might have struck us as, gee, that's, a, that's unusual, but speaking to the former mayors of Tuckahoe in Austin, the mayor of Tuckahoe said they did not go forward with the court consolidation simply because the judges at public trust and um, knew the community and the, the amount of savings that they could achieve was small and therefore they didn't want to do it. In the case of Austin, the former mayor there says, the town, the members of the, of the, of the village felt betrayed by the chain and he regrets it significantly that they had actually had this, had this merger 
and yet they saved very little money. He said it was about a watch. Um, so that's an important element that I think that was really brought to our attention, not just by um, the village justices, but by also those whom we spoke to. Um, the other important consideration, of course, gets down to the financial. Now, the if if the village were to uh, transfer the courts to the um, two towns, the office of the state controller would do a audit of the savings that the village might achieve purely on the expense side. Um, as a result of the, of the change. And whatever that savings is, it's reduced from the annual tax cap that the village gets. In other words, the tax cap amount would be reduced. And that could have a significant impact on the village's um, financial capacity or, or tax capacity. So that was an important factor to consider. Secondly, was the increase in taxes on the residents of a town as a result of, um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the merger of the courts. Now, my wife and I live in Rye Neck, and it's clear when the Rye town and Portchester courts were merged, Tax, taxes to Rhine Neck residents went up consistent with the effective date of the merger, which was May of 2021. So should most of the cases occur in the in the town, in the town of the Meredith part of the village, um, clearly taxes would likely go up to town residents. Now, of course, um, Part of, the, part of the news is residents of Larchmont, as well as the unincorporated portions of the town, their taxes will go up, as well as village residents. So that's an important part of the financial equation um, that, must be, that must be considered. Um, in the case of Portchester, they saved, based upon the controller audit, I think it was $734,000. Now, their budget for the courts was $1.1 million, and um, they had eight staff. So, so the savings wasn't as much as the full budget. Um, and um, their tax cap was reduced by the $734,000. Um, also, finally, um, the amount of revenue that the village of Portchester or city, it is the city. No, it should be city. It should be city. Right. <laughs> um, that they receive and continue to receive has gone down since the merger. Now, admittedly, part, part of that may happen had been a result of the pandemic, but also. Um, under such a shift, less revenue goes to the village than uh, to the village as a result of the town receiving more. And that's a function of the nature of the violations seen by um, seen by the um, seen by the court. The other factor that we in the committee discussed, was the um, impact on residents given the two locations of the, um, of the village um, courts or courts that the village residents might use. And um, now we have to think about travel, parking, ease of access, you know, how's the transit there? Because many of the residents, village residents who use our court are low income, um, and um, we have a higher percentage of people of color in the village than in the 
than in the town in Larchmont. And so we felt that the real location and the ease of access to, as well as the sensitivity of the, the judges was was an important factor to consider. It's, it's not really an economic factor. We concede that, but nonetheless, something that would be very important for us to, for us to consider. So, um, I mean, let me ask if there are any questions before I get into the uh, yeah. recommendation. Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, did, um, did you not talk to Fritz Falanca, who was the mayor of Port Chester when this happened? Um, no, we didn't. Okay. No. Why wouldn't you? Well, because we were referred by you to the treasurer. And right. We just went to, but went to the treasurer. But you talked to the, the past mayor of Tarrant, of uh, Austin. Yes. Well, they were out of office and they- um, The prince were, is out of office. They were, they were out of, they were referred to me, but you'd be happy to do so. Who referred them to? Huh? How'd they get referred? Well, these, the- a consultant study done by um, a company for Village of Port Chester mentioned um, them in their report. So I said, okay, you should go check them out. Okay, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm probably in agreement with your premises, but I, I also think you should talk to Victoria Garrity, who is the mayor of, Port Chester, of uh, Austin, who lived with it the longest. And Fritz Falanca, who was the mayor of Port Chester, who uh, proposed it and then was mayor for many years, and Mayor Marino, who's now mayor there. And mm -hmm. I, I just don't think, I mean, you, you talk to Ossning, uh, but you talk to someone who was there a while back. And I, I, don't, I don't think uh, Tuckahoe is a you know, good analogy at all uh, because they're, you know, they're, they're a very tiny village. Uh, so, did you ever, while well, well, you were considering uh, the uh, commutation times, did you ever consider using this as a satellite port? Uh, no, okay. no. We, okay. I think that's an important point. I think the, the question, now we did not, we did not, uh, because I think that's an important decision that the board would have to make, this board, mm -hmm. is, we did not go to the current, you know, official elected official or anyone in the in um, in the town of Rye or the mm -hmm. town of Mamarine. Um And if we got that far, those discussions would initially be presumably initiated by this board and then followed up by whoever was doing the. Doing the analysis and the uh, and considering of the uh, considering alternatives. Okay. I, I I have a question. Oh, go ahead. You go. Oh, you go. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, wait, I know you, the last uh, you mentioned lastly that um, thinking about the communities of color in this community and that they benefit from the location was that a consensus of those communities? I uh, know it was a consensus of the um, the members on the budget committee when we discussed it. I would just like to know if that was a consensus of the communities who actually represent those communities rather than people who don't represent those communities. Okay, I do because I don't want to speak on behalf of individuals because if they if, if and I'm okay with either or if it stays here and goes there, but um, it's just uh, asking those communities. And saying, you know, do you mind? Do you? Is it okay if you go to the town, or if you know, is it is it out of your way? Because there is also the B line. There, there's a bus, and it's about the same, actually, about the same distance. If you're thinking about travel wise, going up a little up a hill to come here versus even if you take the B line to go to the town. So I'm just thinking about those things and then really yeah. asking and then using the CRC as a resource to say, you know, is, the, is will that, what could it be affect, could your communities, will your community be affected by this change? And those are just, just rather than thinking that this is, that's what their opinions are, rather than asking them. Uh, yeah, well, one that's, that's I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, LMC. I just got a they text. Can't hear me? I just got a text from somebody saying they can't hear us. Sorry. 
Yeah. You sure we have audio? Yeah. So maybe they're on Zoom? No. no we're, 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 we're working here. We're working. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I'd just like to answer. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a fair point. I think mm -hmm. what concerned us equally, irrespective of who's coming to the court, were is practical issues like parking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so um, which is just about the same. It's really not mass mass transit exclusively, but also the fact that um, that parking is uh, maybe an issue. We don't we don't we don't know. Um, but your point is well taken. Yeah, and I mean, because you don't want to specifically target the communities of color saying that, you know, not knowing what mode of transportation or what, what you know, what they need, their needs are. Like, I don't know, that just, it came off a little off to me. Um, okay, fair point, I'm sorry. No, 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 I just, because I don't want to target. And, you know, I would rather say that, you know, for all persons who use this court, what would it be like for transportation for them? Um, and, uh if it, you know, because parking is probably the same here as it is at the town, maybe less here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not putting, I'm not saying, I don't know, but I'm just saying in regards to saying that all persons who utilize this court, what would it, how would it benefit them or how would it disrupt? Yeah. That's, that's the question, the question I had is, uh, you mentioned arsoning. Ossining consolidated their police force yes, as well did. at the same time, right? Yes, they did. Yeah. So um, uh, that uh, did, did did that figure? Uh, how did that figure into this? I mean, they uh, are they happy with that? That well, as the the former mayor explained it to me, he says the most that our the most that the town police department does. Is to help cows across the street. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, so, and 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 having lived in Austin, um, I think that's a very that was a very valid um, observation. Mm. But I remember covering uh, uh, the briefly. The county took over the policing there, and they had a, a county precinct that, that that patrolled both the village and the and the. Uh, and the town for a while. Um, so they, they've been trying to consolidate to save money. Uh, so, uh, so perhaps this is uh, something we just uh, put in a folder and for consideration and at a later point when we do something else. I, I want to say two things. One, I just got a message. It says there's no audio on, from, on the LMC website on channel 76. That was the, okay. Um, and I actually spoke with Vicki Garrity when she was still mayor before the pandemic at an ICOM conference. And I think Jerry was at the table. And, and so it was Meredith who Wilson, uh, uh, Meredith who now, who, who was working in RSD at the time, and now she's um, in the town of Maranek. Um, and Vicki said that, they, that it was, she regretted that it had been done. It had really not done a good service to the community and that she was, if they could reverse it, she would like to reverse it. So, I mean, it's it's worth us chatting with her again. But I think for, for the for those reasons, it's a personal court. And mm -hmm. I think to the point about transportation, it might be easier to get to the town of Marina Court. It's getting to court in Port Chester because it's hard to park in Port Chester, and it's it's a longer drive. So, so and that's that depends on where you get. You know, I guess where you live. And where your ticket is. So. Yes, but also equally important, I think what what brought that up was the, the as much the police department issue mm -hmm. of the taking um, officers uh, much more time, and then they'd have to sit and wait the cases to come up and um, have them a bit of a distance from um, um, from the village proper. Okay, All right. Thank you. Well, I appreciate appreciate it, and uh, it was a interesting Sarah. read. And uh, I, I will, you know, we, we, something that didn't work out, but we will uh, profit by the information in the future. Okay, I, I think I think what why we um, would like to appear today is because of the um, sort of any future direction from the board 
if you would like us or the staff or some combination um, to do further investigation um, or just put it on the table as the mayor suggested um, for this for the time being. Well, uh, I, I think I think you, we should we should allow it to germinate and to see what questions it germs, and uh, then get back to you. Right. But I just got a text from Victoria Garrity, and she said it saves a lot of money. That was her response to me. Uh, but look, I, I appreciate the work you've done, and I appreciate the hard work that our courts and our police department do. You know. The, this is like something that Westchester is going to have to face in the future is, you know, as Lou pointed out, you know, we have, uh, I don't know, 50 something police departments, we have 50 something courts. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, we're, we're only a million people, you know, uh, New York city has, uh, one court system, one police department. LMC, you right? Channel 75 on optimum is working. 76 is a little wonky. At times. So, uh, what are we can on? Say, can you say that in the mic so oh, people oh, maybe uh, can so, hear it anyway? Yeah, say, what it says is on, yeah, on yeah. LM, on, K, on Can we put that on the website? Or and, and that's what we get broadcasting out on? We're broadcasting out on three channels. Really? 75 is the one that's working uh, the best right now. Okay. Okay. We're just okay. going to put okay. a on, yes, so if, if you're watching, and you can hear me at all on 76, turn to channel 75. You actually, if you if you write it down on 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 um word and then attach it, and you could just put it on a screen, yeah, on the Zoom you, screen. You got an idea. I thank you, Lynn. Thank you. I just want to just quick, I just want to add that one of the key recommendations we made was that the board not go forward without further analysis. I don't think we would. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the point that um, Trustee Yazari brought up was important. And there, are, there are others that uh, would really require some further investigation. So that's all. So thanks. Okay. Yeah. No Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me do this. Mayor, may I say something as uh, the uh, Very quickly, Judge Gallagher, because we have a lot on our agenda. We've already yeah. dealt with this. Be very brief. Uh, I'm Judge Daniel Gallagher, Village of Marinette Justice. I've been the village judge for 15 years now. And I would like to thank the members of the budget committee. They spent a lot of time on this. And uh, um, obviously, they provided a thoughtful and comprehensive report on a complicated subject. I wanted to say that uh, over the years of uh, being the judge, one of the two judges, along with my co judge, uh, Christy Derrico, um, I think we have created a really wonderful team, and uh, we are a very efficient, highly efficient uh, court operation. And as you know, uh, from looking at our budgets, um, our numbers, the expenses to run the court have been essentially flat and sometimes less over the past few years. But our revenues have always, in recent years, have always exceeded the expenses of the court. The court is self-funding, essentially. And uh, so I think it's really important to make a fact of that in. But more importantly, this is a, an institution, one of the defining institutions of our village. Uh, it's been around for over 100 years. And I would ask that the board takes that into consideration. Uh, yes, there are issues floating around about the court systems in New York State right now, but this is not something that you can resolve in an isolated way here in the village of Amari. Uh, we serve the entire community but we are particularly focused on the less affluent and the underserved of the community. And uh, uh, while the liquidation of the court might save some money in the short term, those funds that would be saved by the village would simply be transferred over as additional expenses to the same taxpayers paying taxes as uh, town taxpayers as opposed to village taxpayers. So if there was a wash essentially, by saving money at the village level, but the tax is going to the town level, we would be forfeiting a vital community-based institution uh, for no particular good purpose. So I would respectfully recommend that the board 
carefully consider the very detailed guidance provided by the Budget Committee in their report and decide that proceeding with the dissolution of the court is not in the best interest of the village. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I would think that the, the, uh, the board, if the board wanted to get direction to the Budget Committee, I think that they, uh, the, the, the subject should be where in all operations does consolidation save money? And not just you know I don't think that uh, that that the uh, point well taken one thing and I, well, one thing in isolation perhaps uh, doesn't work but perhaps uh, multiple things in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in tandem would have a, a more effective effect a more impactful uh, uh, result. Thank you to members of the board for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's let's go to our staff who's here tonight. All right, let's do Jeff and uh, James first, because I think they, they will be the easiest to deal with. Not that Carolina and Gina were hard to deal with, mm -hmm. but it's just uh, in, terms of, in terms of being yeah. it's, not, it's not personalities, it's topics. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Boyd. I'm coming to you this evening for a capital request for the three power of the Harbor Master vote. That vote is a 2003. And its life expectancy is approximately 10 years on the ending. We're well past that, so it's time to repower it. So I obtained some quotes from uh, Mercury Marine. Now, this is in my capital for 24.5, but the engine right now is 54 weeks out. So if I ordered it tomorrow, I wouldn't have it till next year. So that's why I'm requesting this cabinet. And then, then it'll be out of your capital. Yeah, the, the, the expense will be realized next fiscal year, you're not this fiscal year. So we're not paying for it now. Or we're, so we're, not order, we're ordering it now. We're not even paying for it this fiscal year. We're paying for it in the next fiscal year. Which is when it was scheduled to be paid for. Okay. It's just because of the lead time, I have to do it now. I have to get the Right. All right. Do have any questions for Jeff about this? Well, I don't have any questions for Jeff, but thank you. <laughs> um, it, with any of these capital projects, I guess it's more damn question than anything. Can we, is there any way we can find money out there in the universe? <laughs> uh, some of them, yes, I mean, but typically that's more um, certain types of projects like equipment purchases. You usually, you're not gonna, it's gonna be very difficult to, difficult to find a grant for a new engine. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult to find a grant for a you know traditional sanitation vehicle. Um, and, you know, we've looked at, uh, you know, in the past, we had uh, the, uh, the the veggie truck, which had some issues. It was never quite up to par with the traditional diesel technology. And I don't even know if we're there yet with alternative technologies for some of those heavy vehicles. Uh, but, you know, we always try to search for grants. Uh, like, for instance, uh, one thing I'm going to talk to our grant writer about and I'd like to come back to the board uh, in, on July 10th is for the window project for Stanley Avenue. I mean, that's- You approved that. Yeah. You approved it, but uh, we're, we're, we're gonna apply, we'd like to apply for a historic preservation grant because the building's on the national register. Mm -hmm. So it would be a, a, a way to offset costs. It usually has to be some sort of, uh, something very particular about the project that would Make it appealing to grant funders, or maybe even make it eligible for grant funders. Does that mean that we have to wait to do the work? Uh, well, I, I, the answer is no in terms of the design. And uh, if we apply for a grant in you know June, we should probably hear back in plenty of time. Okay, gotcha. By the time we go out to do any actual work, because like, we're a designer. We can't buy and install the windows, but we can do the design work, which helps yeah. us get the grant. Yeah, and, and and we we know what the cost of it. We we can demonstrate that we are doing the design. We do have a plan in place for the types of windows and what though that cost would be. So it's likely to be a matching grant anyway. Okay, let's uh, let's get, let's see what Jeff. Any questions for Jeff? So we can let Jeff go. My question isn't that we need whether or not we need this. <laughs> An engine's a pretty important component of the book. Um, if it's the power boat. Um, but 
we, again, we have this list of over a hundred million dollars in projects and we haven't developed, we haven't adopted the capital budget for what we're gonna spend on an annual basis and what we're gonna bond. So I think we need to make a spending, we just have sort of this, this vague capital spending plan, but we don't have a budget where we like, we're gonna, let's say we're gonna spend, um, this is just a number, $5 million a year. And some of it may be grant, some of it may be bonded, some of it may be reserve fund, but what if we get to 6 million or what if the 55 things we have that are 5 million, that's, I mean, that wouldn't be that many, um, that you know, if something new comes up, what do we take away? And the town of Mamaroneck does a better job of having an actual capital budget as opposed to us. We have an operating budget, but not a capital budget. We just have the spending plan. And I think we need to, now that we've got this big list of things we want to do, I think we have to actually figure out what we can actually accomplish and what we can actually spend. So I, 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 I really want us to work on that and um, not- make it, an, make, make it an agenda right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. We, okay, fine, I will. I will. Okay. But I also know what do we currently spend on? No, I mean, I know we just broke this list, but what were we spending in previous years before I was even on the board on capital items? Like what was what was the average? We, we can get you a breakdown on that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. That's on for the regular meeting. Everybody's fine for having that on for the regular meeting. Yes. Mr. Barney, what do you need tonight? <laughs> Which hat? There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Board. Um, I have uh, four items that were on the submitted capital project uh, this for this year. Um, yes. So three of them were for this year specifically. Um, the fourth one is was a recommendation um, at uh, assistant manager's um, recommendation. He. So currently we ordered, we received the garbage truck in 2020, sanitation truck. Um, for the last 10 years, they've been on a two year replacement schedule. And so following that suit, um, we should have received one in 2022. We were unable to order it until 2022. We just received that truck that we ordered in January of 22, three weeks ago. So we're looking at 16 month lead time on a, on a sanitation truck. If we were to only purchase one right now or approve the purchase for one right now, we wouldn't see another truck until the end of 2025. So the recommendation would be to get the approval for two trucks and then stagger the 24 build dates so that one would come in 2024 and one would come in 2025 at the end of the year. But if we don't secure the build dates now, we're looking at, I believe it was 10 to 20 percent. Yeah, I mean, the, increase in the truck from the one that we just received to what the new quote is. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the trucks that, the yeah, right now, the quote that uh, you were able to obtain uh, is about a 10 percent premium or 10 percent higher than what we paid two years ago. Uh, so I would anticipate, given what the conditions are in the world with supply, supply chain issues and vehicles. Uh, the cost would likely go up another 10% in two years. I mean, I think when, when I first got into this crazy business, we were paying about 150,000 per sanitation vehicles. And you know, that was 20 years ago. So you can kind of just extrapolate what happens. Let me just ask this question. So it's not like you go to a lot and there are a bunch of trucks. It's, it's built to order. It's built to order. So yeah. um, Gabrielli Mack is the dealership that we dealt with. Uh, they're located most closely in the Bronx. Um, and they have a spec that we've used. We, it's proven uh, to last here and, and it works for us. How long do you get out of a truck? It's supposed, it's supposed to be uh, about 10 to 12 years of front line, yeah. depending on how long you can use it as a, as a backup vehicle. Um, the ones that we're trying to replace are now, they'll be 20 years old. Our one's 20 years old um, and the other one is 18. And these these got so, these got water damage too. And they had they were underwater from Ida. We brought them back to life, but picking up everything that we picked up on these trucks that were already 15 years old, they're they're. I mean, I I think in the spare vehicle category, I still think we spent almost twenty five thousand in repairs on those trucks since I 
Yeah, the, they just they're just be. Yeah, I think in the memo I prepared, which is we've just been updating it for several years now. Uh, I think it says, I think twelve years in front line, and then uh, six years in support capacity, or it's either maybe ten and six. But yeah, we have five front line. We have five uh, garbage routes uh, for the uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday collection. Uh, we use six trucks for recycling. I think. Yes. Uh, well, no, we use we use all we use all we use everything. Okay. On everything, everything on Wednesdays. Yeah, I mean, and that's a pretty uh, uh, significant day for us with the uh, picking up both the commingled and the uh, uh, cardboard every week. And uh, ever since uh, uh, the pandemic and the shift to uh, you know work from home, our the Amazon deliveries have only gone up, mm -hmm. and our cardboard collection has only gone up. That is true. And like I said, we're already uh, one to three years behind schedule with our with the trucks. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we we should be we should have received the truck in twenty two. We just received it, and we should have ordered another one last year to be receiving it. Sure. Just at the you know beginning of oh four, which at this point, even if we got two build spots, we would get one. December of 24, and if we staggered them, we'd get one December of 24, and, and then probably June of 25. Okay. I mean, ideally, it would be better if we could be spreading them out further, but we just can't right now, right? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I mean <laughs> the issue is that right now that they're only, they're only, really, they can only, because they're all built to order, they right. can only build so many a year. Right. So, you know, and then you have New York City buying, 200 at a time and these major, major areas buying all these at a time. So the available spaces are, yeah, I mean, they're, they're right now, Mac, Gabrielli Mac and, and our outfitter for the body on the truck are holding two spots for us just because they know we have to bring to the board. And he said, they're, they're already filled if we don't want them. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Something's done. Right. Is, is everybody fine putting that on the agenda? Yes, yes. yes. You have a choice here. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, we have no choice, and I think that we just need to figure yeah. out how we're yeah. gonna. I think we're in agreement with that. Definitely on the, the work sessions. So the the other two items, um, the the trailer jockey, which is um, used to move our trailers around, because you can't use a semi tractor trailer to maneuver our streets while we're trying to do our jobs, um, and the the trailers that we put on materials. Uh, but both of those were on for for this year's campus. Can I can I ask you a question? Did you present these items before, or did it, did um, did DBW? It, it was part of the. So we was, had our capital meeting. Um, we talked. The, I, we we talked. No, I know prior in pre previous years because you're saying like your vehicles were like twenty to fifteen years old. So, um, my predecessor had a capital schedule similar to what we all have now. And the all, I'm following suit with, with the way everything has been replaced mm -hmm. um, based on yeah. lifespan of, of the vehicles and, and actual use of these. So yeah. I've never presented for these specific things, but in the past, they have. Been. Yeah, internally, we have a fleet replacement schedule for what's called the rolling stock. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these vehicles are on there. Uh, we we try to adhere to that to the best extent possible. Unfortunately, like things like Ida will impact that. Uh, sometimes uh, we'll we can look at a vehicle and say we probably could get an extra year out of it, and we may delay the purchase. But you know, it's it's it is good practice to be uh, you know conform with your fleet replacement schedule because it allows us to uh, keep our vehicles in better condition and frankly, auction them off and get a better price than we would if we kept them a year or two long and they just become maintenance nightmares. I, mean, I guess it just goes in mind with what the world is saying. Are there for uh, garbage trucks? No. <laughs> I mean, it, honestly, you know, after, you know, it's a, probably a tie between police vehicles and garbage vehicles, which are the, like the, the most heavily used vehicles. I mean, now that some of there's been some and this is maybe a jerry question um how many we've gotten some money for repair and replacement mm -hmm. of fema i mean some money from fema for repair and replacement of vehicles that were damaged via ida does this fall into that category at all 
no, I don't believe so, but I, I can I can talk to uh, Courtney who who works in our office. She's been the, pro the problem is is that it's hard to get a replacement for something that you keep using. Yeah. Okay. Right. We have these trucks. We had no other choice. But the, yeah, yeah, we. I mean, we duct tape them together after yeah. the flood and just continue to. And I know you, you, you had to keep getting the water out of getting the lines. Yeah, and 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 we're we're getting our full life out of these vehicles. Oh yeah, on, yeah. The, in a normal circumstance, we're we're in we're in we're in good shape. It's just the, the setback between the delay and the initial orders, cold weather, and then the flooding and extra damage. Yeah. Anything else for you? Yeah. Ready? Thanks. Uh, please transport van for the village. Yeah, that was that again. It's another vehicle that has reached the end of its useful life. Um, that is the vehicle that uh, is used by the police department to transport prisoners to and from Westchester County Jail and the uh, village court. Uh, it's had some significant maintenance issues, and it uh, it uh, it is re it is soon to uh, shuffle loose the mortal coil, literally and, and figuratively. So, how long will this one take to get? It's not. Yeah, um, I, I I can confirm that, but I I don't think that's as big an issue as. Uh, it's just, it's just it's a van. Oh, it's it's a little yeah, we got a truck out. van, yeah. 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 But it's um, it's not like a, a, a something that has to be built to a, a spec like a garbage truck or a heavy duty vehicle. Okay, alrighty. Then that's that's everything for the capital purchases for tonight. You guys are done. Thank you. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, oh, wait, the not. generator, the generator for the transfer station building. Uh, let's talk about that. Uh, that's item uh, 3H, funding for generator repair for transfer station building. So um, we had a power failure slash catastrophe. This is this is the, the situation where the transfer switch fell off the wall? On dome, yes. Um, so we had the 440 service fall off the wall inside the transfer station due to it had, having been underwater during Ida and repaired enough to function as a facility. Um, and I was instructed by Manager Barbario during the emergency to make sure that we never lost power in the building again. And by doing that, we started uh, incorporating a generator in that facility because the rest of DPW is on generate has a generator backup. Trans the transfer station. station does not because the service comes from the up uh, from Northrop, not from gotcha. from Faya. So it was never incorporated into the original generator. So when power goes out, the transfer station's down. And so the the EPW, the generator isn't big enough to do the transfer station too. It's it, when it was brand new, it would have been. Um, but now being is that that generator is approximately four years away from its lifespan. If you're putting that type of load on it, you would you would ruin it in one major step. Yeah. That's you want to get it. You're using it daily. We're not using it at all. I know, We're but actually, I mean, you, but you need it daily for the transfers. No, no, no you don't need it all. So we're currently having a we have an emergency generator placed next to the building that is running when the building needs to be operated. We we've had we have a rental there. That's why okay, we're being, okay. we're able to continue so, operations. But I mean, basically, you need to keep this building. If you're going to have electricity, it has to be a generator electricity. No, you, no, it's a backup. It's a backup. Back. So, yeah. yeah, let me just well, get this. Let me just. So we, we have to replace the service to the transfer station. Building. Correct. We have to install an automatic transfer switch. Correct. So that's that's why the generator now is on gotcha. the agenda and not in the in the transfer station facility build. Right. Because right. in order to connect the new power to the building that we need to supply, uh -huh. the generator has to be selected. Right. Because the transfer switch has to be installed now. It yes. can't be installed after. So just, just right. for the people watching at home, it sounds a little complicated because we're talking about the transfer station, right? That's where uh, the garbage trucks come and empty their load into a trailer that then goes somewhere else. Well, what we're particularly talking about with uh, James right now is the transfer switch. This is a switch that gets mounted and gets fed by Con Ed or you know, whoever the electrical supplier is 
when that electrical supply cuts out, it transfers over to the generator automatically. So you don't have to be there. Correct, automatically yeah. without anyone noticing it. It's almost in seconds. So it's the transfer switch for the transfer station. Right, so um, that's why it was put on for, for this evening because we can't move forward with the repairs right. on the building until the transfer switch is installed and the generators. Are I, I do transfer switch tests all the time for uh, the elevator system. The genesis of the problem is a power problem at the transfer station. Yes, right? okay, correct. Just... Which, which is also all of the power issues for the building when this part is complete will be essentially mitigated because the, the power issue starts with flooding mm -hmm. and everything is being placed now up to code well above the floodplain mm -hmm. in a different, completely different area. Which is also going to be dry all the time. Yeah, right. And, and so people know uh, during the flooded times, uh, the 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 gentleman from DPW, aided by communities around us, uh, picked up about three months worth of garbage in the first few days. Yeah, I believe in the first week. Yeah, picked up the equivalent of three months worth of garbage in a week. So if we don't have a transfer station, that makes that whole situation much more complicated. So A, we can't help our residents clean up. We create, you know, we create a health condition in the community by having rotting garbage, wet rotting garbage all over the place. And not also just to point out, since we were discussing um, the vehicles and why it's so important to maintain the, the sanitation trucks, without that transfer station, um, our vehicles would be over the road to Mount Vernon, Yonkers, or Port Chester. Mm -hmm twice a day, um, instead of just staying within the, and picking the, up. the three yeah. point five miles of the road. So. Right. Um, and, and one other thing, what, what uh, James mentioned about the, the, gen, the other generator needing to be replaced at one point, uh, the platform that we're looking to construct for this generator for the transfer station, uh, we are going to uh, make sure it's designed so that when the time is right, the generator for 313 Fayette can be placed on the same platform above the base flood elevation. Uh, and actually what we'll also be able to do is, uh, as a trustee, uh, yeah, as a read just asked about grants, uh, generators that there are uh, hazard mitigation grants for that. Uh, maintaining our generators is something that's in our hazard mitigation plan. So that's something that would be able to be eligible for funding. And something I would want to fund uh, or ask for funding because a generator project can run into you know low six figures. Okay. Everybody fine with that? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Go home to your family. Thanks for uh, coming here tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now we have we have two more employees who are uh, oh, here. Let's take. Uh, Let's take Carolina. Well, actually, with, with Carolina, are we going to post uh, with, uh, are we going to talk to Greg first or you want to talk to the board tonight? Okay. Carolina, you're here for just request the, uh, of the buildings? Yes. Um, is it working? Yeah. No, no, it's not. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we briefly spoke uh, this week about the renovation of the building. Sir Greg Giangelis, our architect, and I, we had a big discussion about a new concept. We spoke about it with Chino as well. And uh, we're working on it, and we hope to present it to the board soon. So it won't be tonight, but okay. I want to give you some update about this okay. um, new concept. What do you want to? The, the concept was, um, uh, it's raining out. It rains, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, orienting the expansion along Library Lane to take advantage of the topography, uh, which could uh, mean less uh, site work, but it's that we need to work with the- uh, Library right Lane goes pitch down. Yeah. Right. Do so if you, if you think of like the, um, the M1 theater, the parking garage, that little parking area we have at the M1. So but that, it's, we need to discuss that with Greg. That was the only item. That's, I believe so. I'm sorry, you had to wait here for this. <laughs> and now you can leave in the rain. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank All you. right, now let's grab Gino. 
Hi, right, Gino. Hey. So uh, this is part of the phase two of our sewer rehabilitation work. Uh, back in 2021, Arcadis conducted their infiltration of the investigation report for the uh, meter seven, nine, and 10 areas. Uh, basically, that is the uh, industrial harbor heights, all of our net, all set in block, block areas. Um, they conducted <laughs> Uh, closed circuit TV inspection of sanitary sewer pipes as well as visual inspections of the manholes. Uh, based on a review of the CCTV footage, they found significant deficiencies uh, in 11 uh, sections of pipe, uh, pipe collapses, holes, cracks, and some infiltration, and they recommended a full repair uh, of these locations. Uh, proposals were provided by Spinelli and Keller Sessions for the surveying of the rights of ways of these locations and the engineering design services permitting uh, production of bid specifications and documents and approvals from the Westchester County Department of Health for the entire uh, uh, sewer segment uh, replacement. It, each total of 11 locations, total about 1,500 linear feet. Um, in addition, Two locations recommended by Arcadis for uh, further evaluation and inspection, kind of a reverse inspection from a, a manhole they didn't have access to. We tried to do this with the uh, CCTV truck that was co-owned with the village of the Maranek. Unfortunately, it wasn't not successful. The it was unsuccessful in getting the footage uh, that we needed. So in that proposal as well, too, we had uh, Fred Cook uh, uh, will be assisted by our um, Sewer foreman to plug up the location, dewater it, clean it, and then get the footage that we need also to examine the rest of the pipe. Okay. This is all for tonight. Yes. Any questions for uh, Gino? Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, did you have to be here for regular? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, let's see, what time is it? Uh, let's grab a couple of old businesses, try and get through some uh, before we get to the stuff that has to be on for tonight and then our executive session. Uh, revised total for Westchester Joint Waterworks Project A, uh, Chef 22 chlorinization. Uh, this is long story short, uh, New York City decided to put less chlorine in its water because they rechlorinate down the line. We cut into their uh, aqueduct water at this place called Shaft 22 in, uh, in Yonkers. Uh, we have a facility that we share with Yonkers in Yonkers. We're gonna use that facility uh, to add chlorine uh, to our water because there isn't enough uh, chlorine in the water now, but when it gets to uh, the Sheldrake where we then add chlorine again. So it, it, it's, it's uh, it, it, this is, because New York City has decided to put less into their water, we have to then give it a boost before it comes into our community. Uh, and this was approved by the Westchester Joint Waterworks. And it's on the agenda, not for tonight, but in the future. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the noise abatement law from the police department? Nuisance. Oh, nuisance, I'm sorry. Uh, Bob, are we fine with this? Uh, yes. You, you, the police department has looked at this, and I, I, I know that uh, the chief and Lieutenant Trujillo are fine with it. Folks, we've been dealing with the police department. We've looked at this multiple times. We've gone over it a number of, of uh, a number of occasions with multiple figures. The issue that was a problem was the original uh, inclusion of a, of a bond as a way to get out of it, as a way to, to um, get back in business. 
Turns out there was no such bond that we could find that was available. So we've taken that requirement out and put in a, a process by which a property owner who is aggrieved by the determination that there's a uh, that the property can use the nuisance can come to the village manager and get relief. Uh, however, the village manager can get based on conditions uh, or based on the finding that the uh, um, that that part of the property is never part of the problem to begin with. When you have a building with multiple tenants, and one tenant is the problem, and you don't want to shut down the whole building. So we put in a process for that now, rather than a bond requirement. Good. So it's the village manager. Is, is that's the hearing process? Yes. So the village manager conducts the hearing. Correct. And if the village manager is out, the, the system village manager can. Or the, well, city village so manager. the deputy village manager. Yeah. Who would stand in his stead okay. or her stead in the future? And this law was going to be based on a proposed law from New York City. Based on a proposed law from New York City, but substantially modified uh, in discussions with the police department. So, did they use a surrogate bond or did they? No, that was an island bond. Okay. Um, good idea that's ahead of its time. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So, I wrote that one Is everybody fine for next? Not tonight, but in uh, two weeks. Two weeks, uh, scheduling a public hearing for something. Yeah. That, that means at the meeting in two weeks, we will schedule a public hearing for one date in the future. For, for August, presumably. For August, we don't okay. Yeah. On that topic, so for our July, we have a we have two meetings in July. They're both advertised as regular meetings. Did I you think Robert changed it. Did he change? I asked him to change. July tenth is a work safety regular meeting. And then July 24th is just AP and not. I don't item. think the calendar said that. I just, okay. okay. I just want to check. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, is everybody fine for putting in this to schedule a public hearing at our next regular meeting? Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, sorry. Affordable housing placement process. Are we, are we ready for that? Good. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah. We've uh, before you as a proposed local law. And all, all it does is um, change Town of America as the agency that regulates and manages the affordable housing programs to the bill in order to designate. Mm -hmm. So that should suffice. If my understanding is the proposal is to put out an RFP for those services. Yep. And that would offer effectively authorize. The board to fit to select someone else, select an entity, an agency that will manage that process. And there's a draft RFP that was also prepared mm -hmm. by uh, by Jerry uh, last week. Uh, okay, so uh, we we really have to get this done because the people who are waiting to occupy affordable units who can't because the town of Mamaroneck stopped doing their uh, they just stopped doing it. they just stopped doing. It. But we have to. But we have to put the the RFP is going out. June. We'll we'll approve all of that in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So both the RFP and scheduling a public hearing for proposal. Okay, so this will go on on the uh, as well for scheduling a public hearing. Correct. Or right. for the first week, the first we meeting. Go on the tenth to schedule a public hearing. He's right. Oh, I can't do it till the first meeting in August. That's I, I understand. <laughs> and the and just the RFP is going to go out. The RFP is going to be due. Beginning of September. Okay. All right. Uh, Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, if the RFP, if we're scheduling a public hearing for it to actually be a public hearing for the first week of, um, uh, of aug the first meeting in August, does that give enough time for if you said it has to be um, the, the 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 slots have to be filled in September? Is that what you said, Mark? No. Well, I, I'm sorry. No, I all so the so we're the RFP the R, the, re, the responses to the RFP are going to be due September 1st. But all this law does is allow us to hire a different organization. So we put yeah, that. So is that yeah. so? Is that enough time? Is that a good turnaround? Enough time? I'm just asking. Well, I, I think we you should separate the law from the RFP, right? The 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 we, we, we're, we're talking about. We, we can schedule the public hearing uh, on the 
10th. We could also approve the RFP on the 10th. We don't have to wait to, to uh, wait another two weeks. Yes. Right. So if we have uh, issues with the uh, underlying law, um, we can, we can. The, the, you can take a couple of actions. Go ahead then. So the, the, uh, um, on the, on July 10th, the board will have a resolution to consider, to consider scheduling a public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, the board could also consider a resolution requesting that the village manager issue a request for proposals either that day, or if you want to tie it to the potential adoption of a local law, you can do that as well. Uh, we can send, you know, if you just say request that the manager do this, we I, can adjust I, the time I, frame. I would rather message. just request the RFP go out immediately that day because an RFP doesn't require you to give somebody a contract if we don't we don't pass the law or we decide not to do it. Which yeah, is there, there, there are a couple there, options there's, here. There's no harm, no foul in issuing an RFP. RFPs are issued all the time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. Sally, you got that? Uh, Nora, do you have a new affordable housing task force memo? No, I don't have one. I just it, it's I don't have a new one yet, and I have um, you know it's in our it's in the comp plan. You know, establishing one of these is in the comp plan. It's a recommendation for in the comp plan, but I don't have a new memo yet. Right, but in the comp plan, it it, it really talks about using that task force uh, to help people who are you know uh, are facing. Uh, Exorbitant rent increases and working with landlords and tenants. Yeah, it, well, it does. Yeah, it that's does. what it's about. So, so let's but, no, I don't have one. I'll have okay. it. I'll have it in two weeks. All right, thank you. Uh, draft law to amend ethics code. Bob, you wanted to hold this, right? Yes. Uh, Dan Carson and I, uh, the chair of the ethics board, have been speaking about this, and uh, we're going to get together to talk about it. Uh, because what, what happened was the ethics board had done some changes. I had the proposal changes. I had edited those changes to put it into a form that I, I thought was acceptable. There's still some substantive differences about what the ethics board wants to do. So he and I are going to sit down and go over that. And then I will meet with the ethics board. I think their next meeting is on July 19th. To review all of that and get it in final form for the board's consideration. So that's why uh, we put it over to August 10th. Fair enough. I'd rather have it done right. Uh, and thank Mr. Carson for both being the chair of the ethics board and being the chair of the ad hoc committee. Uh, strengthen the village code, raise stormwater. That is something that I know Jerry is waiting for a report from the account the state on the uh, conditions of the American Sheldrick River that he thinks is going to be informative in getting that done. Uh, and they are, you may recall we have we have a draft with a revised swim law yeah. that has been around for several years. Uh, and it's um, on the list of things that uh, Mr. Cotler and I are working on and we will be working with the village engineer to um, come up with a draft once those uh, other matters are able to be considered. Okay, fair enough. So we don't have a time frame for that. Um, we we have we have a list, a pretty long list of laws um, that have to be worked on. Uh, there are some issues we may be talking about later that are, are pushing uh, some laws to the floor. So uh, Greg and I are going to be talking tomorrow about priorities. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, Bob. Uh, strengthening some code, we got the village attorney misinformation regarding PLL. So, Mayor, I don't usually like to uh, bring up things that were discussed at the public hearing subsequently, uh, but this concerns the public hearing over the uh, local law regarding enforcement and administration of the building code and other codes. Um, a member of the public at the meeting that evening uh, said a number of things that I think were completely incorrect and misinformed. Like I said that night, the law was intended solely, and all it did was change procedures, didn't change the substance. Despite that, this gentleman uh, repeatedly said that now you have to get an operating permit to 
have a pool. What was that? Have a permit. It's now just called a permit, an operating permit, because that's the state terminology. You said the ex excavation was not a, not defined. Well, if you look at the look at the code, which has been in effect since 1955. I think it's pretty clear what excavation is. It doesn't mean taking a whole plant plow. So I just wanted the board to have that documentation in front of them and be aware that, and, and make sure that the residents of the village are aware that nothing in that law that you passed changed the substance of the requirements to get approval to do certain things in the village. It only changed the form and the form of administration and enforcement. And the documentation of that in, in your packet. And if I understand it, put all those things in a, I mean, the, the village code's about that thick. The things that were spread all through the code, put them all in one place. Well, that's the ultimate goal. Yeah. Right now, we're not there yet. We needed to put the foundation in place. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to start moving all the other sections there on that list. I've actually already drafted a new law regarding swimming pools. Mm -hmm. No substantive change or minor substantive changes. I've drafted new law regarding excavation and blasting because one of the problems with our blasting law is that we don't address chipping, which has become the more prevalent like the way they of, do getting, it, yeah. of getting through rock. So uh, the building department is reviewing that right now. I've modeled that on, I think it was Irvington had done one recently, that I modeled that on those of Irvington. And the building department uh, is now considering that law, but that will shortly be before you for your consideration. That's the beginning of moving everything into the new part, part three of the code, and updating many of these laws. And like the excavation law has been changed since 1955. So essentially, we can go through it now and, and, and make those changes. Uh, that's right. Okay. That's, 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 that's what right. I understood. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Last thing on old business is river gauges. Um, the, the, Dan, let's let Dan. So, um, Trustee Young asked us to uh, look at uh, river gauges uh, or put it back on the board's uh, uh, work session for you to consider get on your uh, on your horizon. Uh, Jerry was looking at some systems out there, uh, one of which he identified was a camera-based system where we can visually monitor. Uh, the rivers. Uh, he uh, was looking at a system that is being used by uh, the state of Utah. They're, we have their equivalent to a Department of Environmental Conservation. Every state has a different name. Uh, they use a company called LVT, and they placed cameras across the state uh, for their flood season. Uh, their first time utilizing technology. Um, they had some challenges, but we were successful. Uh, it was also the first time that that company had used their cameras for river monitoring. They had basically been uh, cameras that they had uh, put in areas of, of high crime for, you know, police. Uh, they, they have epic flash floods in Utah. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the, uh, you know, we're working with them, this company. We've, uh, we're hoping to uh, come back to you on the 10th with a quote for the system. Uh, basically, we'd have it set up at one a location because there, there are charges for how many places you can view it. There are charges for renting the cameras, uh, and we would be able to kind of share the video over like a, a Zoom feed or some sort of uh, telecommunication, some other uh, uh, form of uh, video. It occurs to me that 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 these things being portable, they could be used for almost any purpose. Absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a camera is a camera. Yeah, well, um, you can mount the camera. On the well, road. they're 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 mobile. They, they, you there, you can locate them at anywhere you need to. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a deploy them ahead of a, a of an expected emergency. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in addition to what you, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. That's more like what I envisioned. Yeah. Than than when the uh, the, the geological survey came in uh, with what they, they proposed. I, was, I thought it was a little yeah. Bit it seems more. to make more sense. But um, I got questions about the costs and the rest of that. But yeah, that, this seems more like what we need. And I would I would like uh, to ask the rest of the board if we can um, uh, formally request from the uh, police, from our first responders, um, uh, how much lead time they need uh, to respond to an emergency. What, what what they're looking for is there other you know other places you know what 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 do they want? 
or, or what do you with, mean in with, regards to i'm sorry no you go ahead no. you got no. um in regards to like flooding or uh, uh, like but i know that they have an emergency preparedness like um plan already in place of where they go like you're yeah. just saying i mean how much lead time would they would they uh ideally like to have i mean okay. what can we yeah. give them what what kind of system can we give them so they would they would have enough time to do what they need to do well in, in terms of something like flooding um we the the village of Ameritic and westchester county in general is not typically subject to flash flooding yeah it's happened but i mean i i I'm I'm 49 years old. I can remember one time in my life where we've had real flash flooding. Um, but uh, you know, I think in generally you know where a storm's happening, you know where your hotspots are. You can redeploy them. As far as other things, I, I think you may want to look at a policy as to when and where you would use okay, something we, like that. Yeah. Well, we should you know, so let, let's make the decision about whether we want to go ahead with the cameras and then ask the police department to find about where to deploy the cameras. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I, it, it sounds right to me. I'm not going to suggest. It sounds suggest right to I'm, me too. Uh, that I'm an expert in this, but it sounds a, a whole lot more um, to the point practical than, than this, than, than participating in somebody else's science project that they'll let us know. Uh, let us yeah. Know about. An hour later. Yeah. 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 There's an hour later, 45 minutes or an hour lead times. And you know, while we don't have flash flooding, and I understand a flash flooding is uh, a definition of science so. too, but we do have, that water comes up darn quick. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it, it, it does. Flash flash flood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it it, it, it appears. It, feel, it may feel like flash. Yeah. That's why I said yeah. damn near. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we we, we need we need instantaneous moment to moment knowledge of what the rivers are doing. Um, I mean, we can't or, or the flood prone areas. We can't we can't there can't be any time lag because. Uh, by the time we find out, your feet will be wet. Yeah, I mean, and, and we're right. It, you know, it, when it happens, it happens fast. Uh, but typically, we know when it's we know if it's going to happen, yeah. so we can hopefully prepare yeah, ourselves. I can tell you, at 2007, I was on the corner of Center, Old White Plains Road, and uh, helping people off of the front loader when they were taking them down from Plaza, and. I must have been there half an hour and the water went from my ankles to my waist in a half an hour. And it just, then we just had to get out of there, but it just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. It happens quick, man. I think this is a good idea. I think we also should take advantage of the, the there's funding that Shelly and Steve keep talking about and, and, and George and Catherine about where they want communities to work together to get to get funding projects from federal and state dollars. And I think that while we should do this, we should also reach out to upstream communities because it seems like it would be, would provide information. Yeah, so it'd be good to have the cam some of the cameras maybe in the, yeah. uh, the park. Uh, what the park. Saxon Saxon Woods. Saxon Woods. Yep. So what, something I was talking to Tony Gilbert about um, the other day was that, because I realized there may there's some other um, municipalities who have flood mitigation committees and seeing if our committee can talk to their committees to encourage their oh, municipalities okay. to um bring these things up and so they're doing it on the they're doing it at like their level and then we're doing it on our level if we do it as a group we may have yes. we may have a better better chance of getting the grant money yeah, yeah. okay uh let's go to stuff that has to be taken care of tonight uh 3A, amendment to contract, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, CDB funding funding for Mount Pleasant Avenue and the Maranek Avenue School Pedestrian Safety Improvements and Drainage Repair Projects. Dan, briefly. Yeah, uh, our grant agreement with the county expired, expired May 31 of this year. So it's just an extension to May 31 of next year. And the county's fine with that? Uh, yes. Okay. They want to give us money. Thanks. Everybody's found that being on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Uh, funding to pay for costs associated with the development and maintenance of uh, prote and protection of traffic plan for Ralph and Gertrude Avenue drainage during drainage repairs. Right. Yeah. This is during the drainage. Repairs. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, we're going to have to shut down Ralph Avenue. Have uh, alternate uh, traffic yeah. plans. So, so people know this is where the Mamarna Avenue School parking lot yeah. is, and, and there's a lot of in and out there. Yeah, between the co-op co camp and yeah. summer sessions. Uh, we need to maintain traffic to the school. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yes. 
uh, construction management inspection services for Mount Pleasant Avenue uh, and Mount Mamaronic Avenue school pedestrian improvements and drip. Am I reading the same thing twice? No, no, it's, uh, this is, the first one was for the uh, agreement with the county. Uh, this item is we need to provide construction management and construction inspection services. Okay, gotcha. And we also have to conduct uh, Davis Bacon wage interview uh, interviews with the staff working the project. So uh, we're going to retain Keller. We, we're going to retain Keller in session. Okay, so the Davis Bacon is to make sure they're paying union wages. Uh, it's the federal prevailing and the state. They have to pay the federal prevailing wage or the state prevailing wage, whichever is higher. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right, fine with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, D authorizing road closure uh, for June Juneteenth ancestral spiritual awakening. We changed the date to July eighth, and this is just uh, recognizing change of date. We already uh, did this for when it was supposed to be on the nineteenth. Mm -hmm. And let's pray for good weather. Uh, everybody's fine with that. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, for E engineering survey and design services for sewer replacements on Baldwin Place, Rockland Avenue, First Street, Jefferson Avenue, Claflin Avenue, St. A Avenue, uh, Meaded Avenue, 7, 9, and 10, Village Engineer. You want to give us a little update on it? Uh, I did that before. Oh, I'm sorry. You did it so darn good. I wanted to hear a repeat. <laughs> Declaration of surplus vehicle authorization to sell uh, by auction uh, parks department vehicle. I think that was what, from 04? Yeah, we actually we actually reviewed this. It was in the original email. I neglected to add this to the original resolution from last month. So okay, so this is just to sell an old vehicle. It's amazing. It doesn't have a lot of miles, but it, I I know it, and it's pretty darn beat up. Well, yeah, and and parks vehicles, yeah. that lovely salt air, salt uh, air. They're carrying all kinds of uh, yeah. interesting loads. Uh, Yes, it was just driven at slow speeds at Harbor Island Park. That's how we have it. <laughs> on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, funding for January, we did. Yeah. Emlyn did request to serve and sell alcohol at their concerts in the park. Uh, I've talked about this before. Uh, to have alcoholic beverages in uh, Harbor Island Park, uh, you need the approval of the Board of Trustees. Uh, the Emlyn has been very successful in bringing great uh, concerts to our community and enriching the cultural life of our community. And, uh, you know, this isn't going to be a drinking uh, uh, event, but, you know, if you want to have a glass of wine or a, 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 uh, another beverage, uh, this is, will enable you to enjoy that uh, and help the Emlyn defray some of their costs. Everybody fine with that? Yes. All right, Mr. Mayor, just one item on, on item 2H, which is the wetlands permit notification. Is that again? 2 what? 2H, H. or is it, you like to say 2H. 2H, yes, me grandma. 2H. 2 uh, the, uh, the local law that is on for tonight uh, for the notification, land use notifications, uh, the, uh, we missed the, uh, uh, the wetlands app uh, permit applications. So instead of amending that law, if you notice and all that stuff, uh, we've developed a second local law to uh, change it and tie it to the same section of code that we're doing all the other uh, notification requirements for. So you want this on tonight? Well, yes. Well, so one of the things that one of the things that law did was in order to substitute the new notification requirements, had to uh, terminate the old, had to repeal the old notifications for each of the laws. I missed the wetlands chapter in repealing that. Mm -hmm. So rather than have to schedule a whole new hearing on the law, what we decided to do was continue with the process of the current law that's before you for public hearing tonight, and then schedule a public hearing for next month uh, on this one. on this new law, which makes just makes that one change. Okay, is is this is this on the agenda for the regular meeting? It's not. We, we can add if you want. We can add it. Or we can just uh, can we do it on the tenth? Yeah. Do it on the tenth. Yeah, it'll be a little confusing if there are wetlands applications, but we can deal with that. Okay, so let's let's everybody find put that on for the tenth. Yes. yes, yes. Schedule public hearing. schedule public hearing on the tenth. For in for specifically what this what this does. Thanks, Mark. 
So this simply says the new requirements are in Chapter 342 of the code. Right. With respect to each of the government's with respect to site planner approvals, subdivision approvals, ACDMC approvals, the current draft of the law that's before you, the current proposed law that's before you, repeals each of the notice requirements of those separate chapters. Right. I missed one. Yeah. So I missed the web that's chapter. So this is going to. Yeah. Basically, the goal is make a one stop shop for notification requirements. Right. But we can't combine them in a public hearing. No, no, that would be a substantive change. Yeah, I so know. The choices are either delay what you have before you or just add this one later. And okay. thought that was better to delay what was you had before you. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, executive session. Also, we also. I mean, I would like to ask about this, this, this centennial thing because yeah, it's just times of essence. I could explain. It's yeah, so it's start? number uh, two F, just real quick. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was approached at um one the African American cemetery by this gentleman. His name is Peter Fenneman. And he's a big advocate for um, I guess it was uh Lafayette, I can't remember. Lafayette. Yes. Marquis de Lafayette. Exactly. And pardon me if I did not know who that person was, but I read up on that person. Um, and he was stating that during the time he came through, and because I understand that he was big on in terms of uh, uh, the Revolutionary War and us yeah. winning the Revolutionary War, and that he passed through Mamaronic. He passed through a Mamaronic Avenue, um, I believe Boston Post Road too. And there is this group called the Friends of Lafayette who want to do a parade. I asked Jerry, what does it take to, you know, to uh, do a parade? But he also wants to include a reenactment at the um, harbor. There, his proposed, he is proposing this to happen like towards the end of August. I mentioned how our parades are, our many different parades, the Memorial of St. Patrick's and July our um, Fireman's Parade, which is our largest. I said, you may be starting at the beginning of the bridge, go down to the harbor. It can look in many different ways. But if we cannot do a parade because of time, resources, everything else, the reenactment would also be nice. And they do have persons um, who can provide that. So it is up to us to decide. I'd be fine with doing a reenactment. It's up to us. It's August 2024. It's not this August, right? He said, "Oh, because he mentioned 2023." Well, that's it. it so says, if I can go back to him <clears throat> and re because in person, and I know it says an email because I don't know if that's a type of because in person, I was like, "Is this this year or next year?" He said this year, but I can go back and ask him again. Um, but I can get clarification and get back. Lafayette, when he came over, was a very young man, and, and uh, he became close with General Washington, and uh, he uh, he was Washington's aide de camp, and uh, then went back and became you know a, a pretty famous Frenchman. And then he came back in '24 to visit America after having been, and he was treated to a hero's welcome. Mm -hmm. And when the Americans went to France in World War II. The general commanding the American troops was a guy named uh, Black Jack Pershing. And when he got to France and he got off the boat, the first thing he said in a speech, he said, Lafayette, we are here. And then said, we're returning the favor. Uh, so just a okay, history, history. Yeah. History, history buff yeah. on that history <laughs> side. <laughs> And the name Fayette Avenue came from somewhere. So that's what he was also saying. He asked me, he's like, do you guys have a Lafayette Avenue or Lafayette Street? I was like, I don't think, but I remembered Fayette yeah. Avenue, which yeah, is- Fayetteville, Yeah, Fayetteville, here we see that. So, Fayette, name for Lafayette? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, he's yeah, like, yes, that back, would be so. associated with. And so a reenactment, but I will confirm the actual date yeah, if it's this year or next year. Good. If it's next year, maybe you could do something more, but this year we're limited. <laughs> and it, it probably- he spent time in White Plains when when Washington was in White Plains. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. I didn't believe this is an email. So, yeah. all right. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for letting me talk a little bit about something I actually know about. <laughs> <laughs> Which never stopped me from talking before. No, true. So <laughs> true. Um, but I will confirm the date and get back. Thank you. Okay. Exactly.
Items on for executive session tonight, uh, 1A, and consider me reading these, making a motion. Uh, Connecticut Fund for the Environment uh, versus the Village of Mimarinic. Uh, this is under 105.1D of the New York State Public Offices Law to discuss matters of proposed pending or current litigation. Uh, item 1B, McCrory versus Village of Mimarinic Board of Trustee and the Village Manager. Uh, this is also under item 105.1D of the New York State Public Offices Law uh, to discuss matters of current or pending litigation. Uh, Taylor's Lane. Mayor, can we pull that one off? That's what I was ready. about to say. Yeah, I'm not ready to discuss. Taylor's Lane, which we're going to hold for another day. And then there are Washingtonville. Uh, probably, it, is, it is anticipated that uh, 4D is it, it is anticipated that a motion will be offered to enter into executive session pursuant to 1051H of the New York State Public Offices Law to discuss proposed acquisition sale at least of real property of the. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. We are given, given the opportunity to have you take one matter off. I'd like to put another matter on. Okay. What is it? The EPA case against the Westchester Jordan Waterworks. Okay. Uh, which concerns the village of Mimarek. Village of Mimarek is a potential defendant. The case has not been started yet, but we're negotiating a settlement. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion that we discuss uh, pending a proposed litigation of the Westchester Jordan Waterworks village of Mimarek versus. The Environmental Protection Association uh, agency. agency. Yeah. All right. All those motions I've made, may I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and then, Mayor, there's one matter of advice to council. You don't need to vote on that, but I'd just like to know I'm going to raise an advice to council issue uh, when we're meeting. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pop into the loo before we. Yeah. Rephrase that. Everybody. Everybody's pissed. Oh, Very fun book about Lafayette. Yeah, no. Not every fan or fan bill was named after Lafayette. It was just named after him.
totally fashion. I need a motion to open up the Board of Trustees work session for June 26, 2023. Regular meeting. So moved. Uh, regular meeting. Regular meeting. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor. All right. Aye. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have no presentations. And the first item on the agenda is an invitation to address the board. If folks have an issue that they want to bring to the board's attention, uh, now would be the first time to do it. Uh, you have three minutes. Uh, you'll be timed in those three minutes. Uh, so, LMC, are we getting feedback? Am I the only one who hears that? You hear yeah. it too? Okay. All right. Is it a microphone? It's Okay, uh, Beverly, please. My name is Beverly Sherrod, and I live at 625 the Parkway. I am the president of the Shore Acres Property Owners Association. I'm representing them tonight. I'm here. I'm going to, I actually have a letter, and since I only have three minutes, I'm going to. And you share a treaty. I also chair the tree committee. This is about sewers. <laughs> um, and I'm going to read this letter because I don't want to mention it. <clears throat> I'm writing on behalf of SAPOA. Uh, as you know, the town of Rye held a community information meeting last week in Shore Acres on Thursday, June 22nd, to open discussion about its plans to replace the bridge over Otter Creek on South Berry Avenue. Bridge connects the Otter Creek Preserve, two or three private residences, and the Maranek Beach and Yacht Club to the rest of the village. You may recall that there is no municipal sewer line for this area. MBR, which is the corporation that owns the Beach and Yacht Club, owns a private and aging line that crosses under the creek downstream while the residents, residences have septic systems. The MBR sewer line has failed several times over the years and leaked raw sewage into Otter Creek and the harbor and closed our Shore Acres Beach several times. In response to questions at last week's meeting, the design engineer and the town supervisor, Gary Zuckerman, explained it would be easy for them to include an accommodation for a future sewer line in the bridge's plans at this point, but that this request must be made by the village of Amanda. Request should include specifications needed for both the residences and the club. They pointed out that installing a new sewer line, making use of the bridge at some future time would also require construction of a pump station. Uh, when MBR, as the new owners of the Beach Club, appeared before Village Planning Board, HCZM, and the Village Engineer some pre-pandemic, um, as part of its redevelopment planning, it was directed to install a new sewer line and construct a pump station as a condition of receiving the building permit. The new line would join the Village's sanitary line at the junction of Soundview Drive and South Barry Avenue, which is across the creek in Shore Acres. Um, it would travel from the Beach and Yacht Club property across the Otter Creek Bridge and up South Barry Avenue. And the pump station would just be located between the Otter Creek Bridge and MBR's property. Um, we're not asking for that right now. We just want an accommodation so that can be done at some time. According to the requirement, the line was to be designed and installed according to the village's specifications and requirements. The portion of the line between the bridge and the MBR property would connect the residential properties in that area to the municipal line, eliminating their septic systems and potential contamination of our waters. Both the sewer line and the pump station were to be constructed at the sole cost of MBR. Thank you. Uh, could you just we're we're out of time. Could you oh. could you send the rest to us? Okay, I've actually already done that. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We, we will we will definitely take that. Out. Thank you very much, Beverly. Anyone else wish to address the board? Yes, sir. Good evening. 
Uh, hi, my name is uh, John Ganti, and I'm here to speak on behalf of Don Hito, the restaurant that is currently closed on at 122 Monarch Avenue. Unfortunately, our lawyer, Andrew Spath, cannot be in attendance tonight due to the short notice, but we thought someone from the restaurant should be here to represent the business when we were informed that people would be showing up tonight to speak about the restaurant being closed. I'd like to start by thanking everybody for their time, trustees, village manager, and the mayor. And I'd also like to express deep thanks to the community for the support that they've been showing over the last month of 37 days. I'm here tonight to ask for help. After working with our lawyer, Andrew Spatz, over the last month, we have seen to hit, have hit a roadblock in our efforts to reopen. We have been closed for 37 days. In that time period, myself and other representatives from the company have been in consistent contact with the village lawyer and the Department of Buildings. But today we were told by the Department of Buildings that no further action could be taken by Don Hito until the village lawyers have saw, signed off on it. We understand that there is a process, but we have been closed for uh, quite a long period of time and it makes it harder and eventually impossible to reopen. We are humbly asking for your help and direction in resolving this matter. We will not last much longer if we don't have the ability to operate in the very near future. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ginty. Anyone else? <coughs> Stuart Tinker. Um, over the weekend, I received a um, political mailer, um, and across the top, the tagline was because, quote, no is not enough. A little hard to understand what exactly that meant, but I believe it was um, a comment on trustees voting no on legislation. I want to point out and just turn that phrase around a bit and say, yes is not always enough. And there are a bunch of items I'd like to go through. Municity records management system. It's been two years since the board approved the purchase of $60,000 software to manage the building department's records. There was also money approved to implement this. In March, I was told by the village manager right here that by April 20th, it would be operational. As far as I know, still not operation. As the board may or may not know, we had numerous failed software implementations for the building department. Um, so that's two years. Body cams for the police. These were approved over two years ago. As far as I know, they still have not been implemented. Trees. Over almost two years ago, the board approved a new tree law that required the tree committee to review any plans that the village manager had or his designees to remove trees in the village. This is still not taking place either. And on information and belief, we've lost a number of healthy native trees. Fire safety. An ongoing problem. Recently, the board approved a new law requiring fire safety inspections every year for multiple dwellings to protect health and safety of residents. As I've told the board, basically these inspections are never done, haven't been done for years. Procurement. We have a procurement law. Regularly, the village manager ignores it, I believe, to the detriment and expense of taxpayers. So what I'm saying to the board is that just because people vote no doesn't mean something won't get done, but just voting yes doesn't mean something will get done either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, Tony. Anthony, forty-one, thirty-six, one, four, two, four, two. Tonight, I'm here to complain. I'm voting on U.S. one for my life, my whole life. But 
the bridge. They start at five o'clock in the morning to set things up. Six o'clock in the morning, they start pounding all morning long. They work underneath the bridge. One o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. They all Saturday will bang their legs. And I understand that. No. The metal plates bangs 24 hours a day. I would like to thank the village that called up and they gave me a telephone number to call. I made four phone calls to the person in charge or supposedly who complained about the place. The first time I, I left my number, he never called me back. So I called him back. He was a very nice man. Every day. He said, yes, he said, you know, uh, we're going to work on that. So then I called back three days later because they were worse. I never got an answer. So then I called him back about four, four days later. Very nice man. He said, yes, I did report it, and they were looking into it. Well, maybe we could get an engineer to look into it. We got an engineer to look into everything else. But the plates all day long, all night long. Thank you. It's, 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 uh, you know, I give you the phone number, but I'm wasting your time. A nice man, so not to get done. <laughs> Another point I, I asked, I asked him uh, the pleasure of working with some of the people from the village of Mary. I had some problems with my dad, but I had this one. But I, I, I want to tell you all the employees I dealt with in this village were so fortunate. They go out of their way, yeah. friendly, kind, and uh, really accommodating. My next thing is if Barry and Jefferson have you played with them. I don't know which is going to be finished first, the bridge or the playground. I've been in the place. They yeah. come there and they work one day and then five, the rest of the week they're not there. When they come and they work one day, the rest of the week they're not there. Um, the other day, two people were working. But, you know, the kids, the kids deserve to park. Uh, the park's been closed for a while. Maybe somebody could put a, a fire under their tail, or maybe they could get there every day and, and finish it for these kids. Thank you again. Thank you, Tony. Good thing. I think the plates are louder too. I, I like the past week. I I felt that they were noisy. The park bell was put up with it up door. <laughs> Someone else had to speak. Thanks. Hey, let's start with one of my favorite subjects. Um, flood mitigation, raising, the, allowing the owners of the buildings to raise their buildings 15 feet above where they are now, so you take them out of the flooding. I've been up here almost three years now advocating that to, rate, to, to allow the buildings to be raised, that they have to be open, that half of the, uh, of the, um, the uh, underneath that is raised has to be pervious surface. If it's enclosed, they lose their uh, they lose their variance, and it has to be based on the current footprint of the building. If somebody wants to do something else, then they still have to go get you know special permits and everything. And I keep hearing, well, we got to we got to do it all at once with a comprehensive plan. We did that once with with, with the uh, with the housing. The problem is, if you just adopt everything at the same time, if you have major problems like you do with the affordable housing and the housing in the village, because you made so many changes to the law, how do you know which one works and which one doesn't? This is a no-brainer. You, 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 you pass it, if it doesn't work, you know, six months, nine months, you say, you know what, that didn't work. Then you know you have the idea about um, pumping from one side of uh, Columbus to the other, 
Um, you actually had a brilliant idea of putting the pump on the other side of the river and pump it. You try that. How much does that help? Every incremental thing that you do helps, but to turn around and say, we're not going to do anything until, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers is here. And, you know, then we're going to try to do it all at once. How do you measure what works and what doesn't work if you just try to do it all at once? Right now you're doing the dredging. That's terrific. Now you have a measurement, you know, how is the dredging working? Where does the dredging work, you know? So, you know, like I said, this, this is the, the third year in a row that literally every meeting I'm coming up here, let, let the citizens decide if they want to raise their house 15 feet. In some cases, it's advantageous for them, but the simple fact they're paying so much in flood insurance right now that it's almost an offset. We have a beautiful village. We have a beautiful plate of activities going on this summer. And we have absolutely no signage for anything outside of the Fireman's Carnival and Juneteenth. That's ridiculous. We, we, we need to put our best foot forward in this village. We're about to have a Fireman's Carnival. We're about to have a parade that's going to bring in five, 10,000 people. We got a, a fireworks display that brings in five, 10, almost 20,000 people. Why wouldn't you want to have signage? at the entrance in the kiosks, everywhere in this village, advertising Yiki invasion experience, okay. advertising block party. Brian, your time is up, so please end it up. That was three minutes? Oh, yeah. you're, you're, you're way okay. Yeah. Okay. Just, just the fact that we have a beautiful village, we have great activities planned, and last year, you weren't here, but I was here last year, and I spoke on this when they had the second fireworks display, you know how many people were there? 300 people for a fireworks display as big as the 4th of July because they didn't advertise it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, tonight we have a few public hearings. Uh, first one is continuation of a public hearing on a comprehensive plan update. Uh, just for the public. component probably in July. We are waiting for uh, input from uh, HCCMC. And I believe we have the input from the county, right, Dan? Uh, we don't have the official input from the county. We made our presentation. We, as in our village planner and our consulting planner, uh, who's working on the project, the county uh, indicated they were pleased with the work that we did, but we have not received the official communication from them. Okay. I need a motion to open the public hearing. I'm moved. Second. All in favor. Uh, Mr. Desai, would you like to start us off? Neil Desai is a planning consultant who has been working on this. Hello, Neil. Hello, hello, everybody, board and, and members of the public in attendance. Um, the uh, my name is Neil Desai, principal planner at Hardesty in Hanover. Um, I have been working with uh, on, on the comprehensive plan for, for several years now. And uh, June 12th, we had our first public hearing where there were a number of comments that uh, um, members of the public um, came up to deliver. And I have been tracking if there any of the comments had specific uh, requests or suggestions for the comprehensive plan. Um, I have recorded those in a comment matrix and uh, similar to what uh, we what we had did for the prior round of comments uh, on a previous draft of the comprehensive plan, um, we will be uh, sorry the previous draft from I believe it was March. Um, it was the March first version of the comprehensive plan. Um, We'll be doing the similar thing. We'll be providing responses to uh, everybody who commented. So we appreciate. Uh, everybody who has submitted comments so far. And so this is the second public hearing. Um, and I think uh, you gave it the update on the process. I was going to ask uh, uh, 
Greg uh, Cutler for an update, but uh, the mayor has already given that in terms of the process. Uh, we're still waiting for consistency review from hazard mitigation, as well as um, the letter from Westchester County. In the meantime, we're continuing with the production of the uh, part two and part three of the EAF. And um, as, as far as, uh, uh, you know, we look forward to any, any uh, comments from the public that are in attendance today. Thank you, Neil. Mr. Cutler, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think I think Neil summed it up. Um, you know, we're we're just waiting on the county and Harbor Coastal. It was on their their last agenda, and they may be sending a letter requesting additional time for for their review. Thank you. Uh, anybody from the board like to comment? Last week. Okay. Anybody from the public? Can you get rid of that sound? I don't know where that sound is coming from. I know. It's very, very sad. Yeah. Let's go ahead. I'm sorry. Am I limited to three minutes? Or can I... No, it's the public hearing. Robert Stark, 704, Palmer Court. I'm a member of the Traffic Commission, and I'm here to present to the board um, the recommendations from the Traffic Commission on our review of the content. Um, so we met with Mr. Desai. And uh, we reviewed the transportation and traffic sections of the comp plan. We also met with uh, Michael Smeets, who gave a wonderful presentation about hiking, which I think he got. And so I have a kind of a one page bullet point recommendation covering various topics. And I'm just going to go over a few of them. And I'd like to hand them out to you and hand out anybody in the village. Anybody in the village, anybody in the audience who is interested? Right now, you're addressing the board, so let's just. So, uh, the first topic is a biking project. Mr. Desai um, reported that the top transportation priority recommended in the compact by their survey is to prepare a village wide plan for bike facilities and amenities to include not just the lanes and markings, but also signs and racks. We can encourage residents to bike by setting up biking facilities and structures. Our next section dealt with pedestrian safety. And we're going to cover some bullet points about pedestrian safety. Um, Mr. Desai reported that although village, village of Nomadic is walkable, it is not pedestrian friendly. Uh, that we need to make walking at intersections safer for pedestrians. Unfortunately, there have been several recent traffic incidents at various locations in the village of Nimerinet uh, throughout the village. As a member, at, as the traffic commission, we received complaints from residents about various issues, and we received an increased number of complaints about um, reports of residents of excessive speeding throughout the village and failure to obey stop signs. Um, the traffic commission believes that the board of trustees needs to implement an information campaign for all residents regarding traffic and pedestrian safety, similar to the Vision Zero program. Mm -hmm. Can we leave that up to you to come up? Our next issue is parking issues. Um, the traffic commission believes, and we've heard a lot of complaints about parking. Uh, so our recommendation is to improve code violation enforcement throughout the village, especially on the Merrick Avenue, south of the train station and in Washington Road. Uh, the next also is the wayfinding system. And all we say, there are some things that need to be done to complete the wayfinding system. I'm not really clear what needs to be done, but I don't think that was ever completed as a gap. And the final is the final topic is use of micro transit for destinations like the Metro North, Emlyn Theater, and Romantic Avenue. And the advantage of having some kind of micro transit system is it provides uh, multiple people rides, it reduces traffic 
congestion, and it's app based. So what? App based. So I would like to hand out this one page bullet points. My hands now. Sure. Um, Robert, can I note that that last item that you said about the uh, the micro transit is similar to what we um, that is in Nourishell currently, correct? In terms, yes, Nourishell has that. So I just wanted to give a visual of what that looks like. I mean, you did. I'm just saying it. it that's what the Nourishell has. Nourishell um, city has. So I was just giving like a visual, just in case people didn't. It's probably thing. Yeah, any contribution there as well. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And if anyone's curious, that's called the circuit, New Rochelle circuit. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> it's not pedestrian friendly over here. <laughs> that's my way. Thank you. Thank you. And what else, please? Good evening, Stuart Jeeker. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things I followed closely in the village for very much talk I've lived here. Is this, um, excuse me, Mr. Chief. Does this have to do with the, the subject of the public hearing? I'm sorry, it has to do with the comp plan. That, that's what I mean. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. Um, so the two topics are water quality okay. and the trees. Fine. Um, the Table 10 in the comp plan um, shows that water quality was the most commented on issue for the comp plan. 47 um, people left, uh, put it as their first entry. Um, considerably more than everything except the air quality and transportation. Um, I've spoken at the MS4 report about water quality and stormwater management, and some of these comments will be the same as there. I don't believe the village is doing as much as they can in this regard. Um, and I'd like to point to the comp plan on page 134 under environmental sustainability. Um, the first subject is lead, manage, and coordinate. Um, it starts by saying the Board of Trustees has demonstrated commitment for the village of the Marinette to become more environmentally sustainable in the community. And it says the village can demonstrate, by example, to encourage residents and business, businesses to consider their own impacts on the environment. I wrote this board about, a lot of times, about erosion and sediment controls, which are a one of the basics of keeping silt out of our rivers and pollution out of our um, Last time I wrote to you, I think it was about the garden that was put, being put in at the corner of Center and Rockland. The village went in and stripped the entire site of all vegetation on a slope. And all I asked was that they put up a piece of silt fence, like the village would require for any resident in the village. I've sent pictures after a rainfall of the sediment that washed off the hill and into the catch basins. And still, there's no silt fence there. So, all I'm saying is if the village, in the, as in the comp plan, wants to set an example for residents, this would be a good thing to do to show 
presidents how these things should be properly done. Also on water quality, the comp plan mentions several times the 2018 water quality assessment and improvement plan, improvement program implementation plan, which was drawn up by, I believe, Greg Cutler then, and our then village engineer. I was surprised in reading through it that it called for a stream quality assessment, a harbor quality assessment, and an aquifer quality assessment. I looked through the comp plan. I saw no recommendations in the comp plan for those assessments. Um, this went before the board in 2018. I'm not sure what happened to it. It showed up at a few meetings and then disappeared. But I think it's a good place to start to know what we have before we do start doing. Um, the complex. Um, the other item is trees. Tom plan says that the village has planted and cared for more than 1,100 trees throughout the village since 2010. Um, since 2010, in an extensive tree replanting program, approximately 100 to 120 new trees are planted annually and intentionally spread throughout the village. I've been quite active in trees, and I will tell you, they're not being spread throughout the village. They're mostly being planted in affluent neighborhoods, and there's clearly an implicit bias against the Maranek Avenue School area, where I actually submitted, I think, 70 planting locations, and the village has never planted a tree there. Not one tree. So either maybe take that sentence out or plant some trees. Um, the other thing I would say is I don't think we have any idea how many trees we planted in the last 11 years, or at least how many trees are still existing from that planting. I've asked for a record of the trees planted, never been able to get it. Um, page 149. One of the recommendations is undertake a tree inventory and track location type and planting date of, of recently and newly planted trees on public property. I was on the tree committee in 2007. We were talking about doing an inventory that this has been a subject of the village forever. You can't manage what you don't inventory and just like to put it to this board at this point I was very stunned I live next to the Tompkins farm over it's purported to be the oldest tree in the village pre-revolutionary it has major deadwood hanging over Pine Street a well-traveled street it's on village property. As far as I know, for the 40 years I've lived here, everybody said this is the oldest tree. I was very surprised to see in the, one of the last three committee minutes that they stated that the Tompkins Farm Oak is not a village tree. I wrote, I believe the board and copied, I got a rather terse response from the mayor um, so I'd like somebody to go on the record of whether trustees believe that the Tompkins Farm Oak is a public tree and the responsibility of the village to care for.
you have any more remarks about the comprehensive plan? Mr. No, I was hoping to get a response from you, Mr. Mayor. You, you're quite familiar with the conference from O. Thank you. And Please continue your the, remarks. Thank you're you. liaison to the tree committee, correct? Can't even admit that. It's really sad. Um, but in any case, I hope you will add the recommendations of the Water Quality Assessment and Improvement Program implementation plan to the comp plan and call for a stream, harbor, and aquifer quality assessment. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? Please. Thank you. I'd like to clarify two comments that were just made to the board. Um, the first one is, well, actually the second one is, the uh, minutes of March, I'm, I'm chairman of treatment. Um, the minutes in March did say that we were not sure of the ownership. We thought it was a private tree. Subsequently, we have not been able to convene a quorum for a meeting, but it's been researched by the village manager's office and established that in fact it's a village tree. It's going to be inspected, or perhaps it has been. I haven't talked to him about that lately. And whatever is recommended as far as pruning or maintenance is going to happen. Um, the other thing I'd like to clarify is that we did receive and noted how grateful we were in the minutes last fall, um, a list of recommendations of places to locate trees in the area of the um, Leicester Avenue, the Maranek Avenue School District. Um, it's our practice in recent years to um, not just put trees in front of people, but to write to the property owners to ask if they're willing to accept a tree. We're not required to do this, but it seems like a courtesy. And of that list of 70, we ultimately pointed to 20 because some owners declined them for various reasons. So, in fact, that also is noted in the minutes with thanks for the work that was done because actually I'm not thinking that we heard. So, thank you very much. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd just like to clarify two things. The minutes of the meeting clearly said. Tompkins Farm is not a village tree. I'm happy to hear that the village can take responsibility for it. It has been inspected. Um, I was surprised to see that inspection said that there were no problems with it. When there are large <laughs> significant pieces of dead wood, one of which fell a month ago um, right on my street. So and the, as far as I know, when I've gone through the neighborhood, no trees have been planted in the Mamaric Avenue School neighborhood. A number were planted across the street um, in where Hillside runs through. Um, so we've had two plantings since the list was submitted. I hope the next planting that um, they will reach out to residents and plant some trees there. Thank you. Anyone else on this topic? Comprehensive plan. Okay. Uh, and the motion from the board to adjourn this hearing until the July 10th hearing. So moved. Second. So my second? Yeah, second. Yeah. We, have, we have a few seconds. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next public hearing. It is PLP 2023 regarding land use application notice requirements. I need a motion to open this public hearing. Double. Second. All in favor of opening the public hearing. All right. All right. Uh, Bob, can you give a little brief summary? Sure. Right now, uh, you know, land use applications often require multiple approvals. Site plan approval, subdivision approval, wetland approval, public focal land management, consistency determination. Right now, each of those sections of the code has its own notice requirements uh, for the hearing. What this does is consolidate all those uh, requirements into one uniform uh, notice provision for an application so that 
and residents can know what's going on in a more consistent way. And applicants, residents, and other applicants can have an easier way of a more consistent way of giving notice of these applications. That's what the purpose of this law. Now, we know if you were watching the uh, work session this evening, talked about the fact that we had inadvertently omitted the, omit the repeal of one sector having to do with wetlands. Uh, because what this does for each chapter is, is uh, for each type of permit is repeal the existing provision and substitute the new common provision for it. So that error will be corrected in the new proposal for the law that will be introduced uh, at uh, the live camp meeting. But we didn't want to interrupt the public hearing or throw down the process of moving this law forward if the board wants to do so. Thank you. Um, before we get started, is it hot in the audience? I think you oh, yeah. just adjusted it. Oh, you got, I, do you mind if I, if, if I turn the fan on slow? Would that be all right? I don't want to, this is really hot up here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> if, if it's uncomfortable, please just let me know and I'll get back. Yeah, I don't look like it's low. <laughs> uh, does anybody in the audience want to comment upon this law? Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. So, as, as Bob pointed out, <clears throat> what this is, is to try and make there'd be some consistency in the law. Uh, we had uh, different different uh, distances all throughout the uh, code. Uh, you'll still be required to have a sign on your property that says, you know, how the public hearing is gonna begin. We talked about uh, having what it calls QR codes on the sign. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that you can, you can track where that application is in the process. Whether, like, say they started uh, planning, do they have to go to HCCMC? Uh, do they have to go to uh, BAR, Board of Architecture Review? And you could hopefully track all that uh, via the village website. So that was the idea behind this to make it easier for uh, people who are doing things with their property and also make it uh, easier for folks to track it. Uh, okay. There's no comments. Uh, I think the a motion to close the public hearing. I have two questions. I'm sorry. So my one, I, my first question is, um, 372-3, the notice of the application, it's within 200 feet of any boundary line. So we're not drawing a circle anymore. We're actually going from property line to property line. I think that's better, but. That's, that's the intent. Okay. And then the other thing is, I don't think we have sign in this. I think so. We've crossed off sign in all of the part we've crossed off, but the 372, the notice requirements don't stipulate there's a sign. I can't find it. Mr. Cutler, you want to say something about that? You're, you're, you're muted, Greg. Yeah, I've, I'm just pulling it up now. The public Bob, can you speak to it? Yeah, yep. I'm sorry. I think we must have given you the older, older version of the law. The one that was initially mm -hmm. before the board, before the land use board comments that suggested putting the okay. back. Yeah, because it was it was in the it was in the last draft that I looked at. That's so fun. it looks like the wrong one was uploaded. Because we discussed it last week. Okay, so we can't really. No, we can't. Uh, so. Well, if we're going to add the wetlands, should we just. Do it all in the close All right. So let, let's just close this public hearing. Okay. Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We'll vote on this. We'll wait. And because what, what Bob was. Alluding to is that uh, we 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 had another uh, proposed law that.
that was kind of in tandem with this that needed to be done. So we were, we were gonna put that on for the, uh, the scheduled public hearing for July 10th, not for July 10th, at July 10th scheduled public hearing. So we can do it all in one fell swoop. Am I correct? With the corrected version. With the corrected version, okay. All right, no harm, no foul. Uh, to amend village code to include requirements for fair and affordable housing for all zones in a village. This has been closed and sent to the county. We're waiting for the county planning and HCZM state. Right? Um, so on this one, you have gotten a response from Westchester County. Um, they determined it to be a, a local matter, uh, but they did commend the village on um, furthering, uh, affirmative, affirmatively furthering fair housing. Okay. Um, it did go to HCZM for advisory consistency uh, this past Wednesday. Um, I did not hear any um, negative comments towards it. Uh, well, we haven't heard back but we haven't that. heard, we haven't gotten a formal um, response from them. And we're already within the 30 days. So we, they, 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 they have time yet, is what I'm saying. Correct. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't we open this and then adjourn it until July 10th? Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I could have a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor, open the public hearing. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn the public hearing until July 10th? So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, what I want to do with, with, with the board's indulgence is because we have folks here who are waiting for an item that was discussed at the work session and we decided that we were going to move it to the regular meeting if we could take that item now so that they don't have to wait to the end of the agenda uh, and they get this indulgence because they give us money <laughs> <laughs> money to build a park, yeah. not personally money. That'll pop up on next door tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> Murphy once again takes money. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, the item that has been added to the agenda, I'm going to read right now. This is the Harbor Island Conservancy Resolution. And Dan, thank you for getting this done so quickly. Whereas the Harbor Island Conservancy is a registered 501c3 that for over 20 years has raised funds to construct projects that enhance the park experience for the residents of Mamaroneck. And whereas the work of the Harbor Island Conservancy is a testament to the generations of Mamaroneck residents who have supported and patronized this village jewel for over a century. And whereas most recently the Conservancy raised funds to con struck a Zen garden on the oriental side of Hall Brown Park behind the existing decorative entrance sign. And whereas the Zen garden will incorporate natural plantings, bench, accessible path, uh, that should be uh, handicapped accessible pathways, which will serve as educational, cultural, and environmental benefit for generations to come. And whereas, Jesus did, Whereas the, the Harbor Island Conservancy has raised all the funds to construct this project and is seeking approval from the Board of Trustees to move forward with this project. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees accepts the gift of a Zen garden to be created by Orienta Avenue decorative entrance side and be or further resolved that the Board of Trustees request that the Harbor Island, request that the Harbor Island Park Conservancy move forward with the construction of this new amenity for the village and be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees request that the appropriate village staff provide the administrative support to the Harbor Island Conservancy necessary to implement this project and be it therefore resolved that the Board of Trustees thanks the Harbor Island Conservancy for their several decades of service to the community and for the gift of a Zen garden that will benefit village residents for decades to come. That is the resolution. I will make that motion. Second. Does anybody have any comments? It's just a marvelous, uh, marvelous addition. Thrilled. Cool. Cool. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Geyser Reed? Yes. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? 
Aye, and thank you. 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 Two of whose members are here tonight. Can we also say that the Conservancy put a, it gave us a, a, a nice presentation, part of which is on our work session agenda. So maybe all those slides can get uploaded. So if people mm -hmm. want to see it, they can see what the, just like some schematics of what it might look like. And, uh, Watch the work session I, for the explanation. I, I actually think that we're the, your first project was a lovely playground in the harbor. And that was a community event to build the whole thing. It was a fun weekend. I did. I did. I, 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 I'm not good at a lot of things, but I could use a drill. Uh, but that's probably getting near the age where we got to think about doing that over again. Oh, the, they, yeah. yes. Jeff, yeah, but, uh, Jeff and, and Jason have talked about that. All right. Thank you very much for that. Kid. I appreciate it. They, and it, it, they, they've raised in excess of sixty thousand dollars for this. So thank you, and Beverly, thank you for your input. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now let's start getting near the agenda. Uh, uh, order the bills: resolution approving budget transfers for over budget accounts. For fiscal year 2023, uh, just so we can straighten this out before I get questions about this, the fiscal year in villages uh, is from June 1st to May 31st. So we have just entered the uh, 24 fiscal year, even though we are in 23, the 23 fiscal year started June 1st of 22. Uh, so we are now paying, we're still paying bills that we accrued in uh, 2023 fiscal year. And this transfers uh, $20,000 from uh, clerk treasurer uh, personnel to clerk treasurer contract service. So it's not going over budget, it's transferring within lines in the uh, department. And street lighting, uh, refund on real property of 8100 and eleven dollars, and that's going to street street uh, lighting utilities. So I need a motion. I move. Second. Anyone comment? No. Sorry. Yes, sir. Um, page twenty-eight. Oh, no, you're on the wrong. We're, we're we're doing a transfer right now. Oh, I'm sorry. They stay up there, stay up there, it's not going to be a long. Uh, I need a motion. Oh, we got it, we got it. Pull, pull the roll. Trustees Rawlings? Yes. Yeah, Reed? Oh, yeah, excellent. Young? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? All right. Uh, the next up is 2B, uh, is the order to manuals. And tonight on the manual, we have a three hundred thousand uh, dollar payment to the Marinette Public Library. This was the uh, tan distribution, the first, the first cut of it. Uh, so, I need a motion for that. So moved. Second. Hold the roll. No, no, he's he's here for he, he's coming. No, he's I'm not, not coming on that. Uh, Trustee Rawlings, Young, yes. Lucas, yes, Mayor Murphy. Hi. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tigger, are you doing 23 or 24? You, I'm on 23. Okay. Then, doing? Yeah. When, when, now, next up is item 2C uh, approval of abstract of order of vouchers for 2023. Mr. Tig, go ahead. Um, page 28. Um, the first payment for the third floor of the um, 169 Pleasant Avenue building is in $256,000. Did the village do competitive procurement on this? Mm -hmm. Do I get done for this island? Yeah, it's your three minutes. Okay. So nobody on the board can say whether um, you complied with the law and did competitive procurement. 
So I'm going to take that as a no. And I, as I brought up before, uh, procurement law is there to protect the citizens um, so that contracts aren't given to favored vendors. Mm -hmm. Page 13, bottom of the page, Richard D. Pocari, mm -hmm. correction of overpayment for plan review. But it appears to be an expenditure. I'm not understanding that. If there was an overpayment, why would it be an expenditure? It's our expense to pay it back, I think. At the bottom. I'm sorry, it seemed it seemed to imply there was an overpayment to Mr. Polcari. Am I reading that wrong? I read um, he overpaid and we paid him back. He overpaid? Yeah. You know who Richard Polcari is? No, I assumed it was an applicant. No. Despite the building department currently having 12 employees, the most probably twice what I've ever seen. We are paying Mr. Polcari, as I understand it, to do plan review. We received, I think he was a contracted person. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying that it, it was a person who used to work with the uh, building department. Uh, and he was, I think he was contracted at the time. When I, it was that that taken from my time. I, I would suggest that there's something wrong in the building department if we have 12 employees and we don't have anybody who can do plan review. And again, this appears to be a correction of an overpayment to Mr. Polkari. So why is it showing as an expenditure? Can that be corrected? I, I can, can that be corrected? I can look into it. Please, okay. thank you. I'm sorry? I'm sorry I said I, I, I can find out what look into it. Okay. But, you know, I listened to a meeting where um, Mr. Barbario went on long time about how he and staff sit down and review the order of the bills and it's make really everything I'm sorry Hi, it's, it's not making a sound it's up. Up. finish finish your okay. last point um page no, no finish just finish your last thought I, I didn't say go to another topic Please, your three minutes are well up. Okay, he gave somebody else four minutes. I'll take yeah. a few Stop, minutes. stop. You know, Mr. Teager, please just do, follow the rules. I'm just asking you kindly. I'm just sorry. follow the rules. I waited through a minute of silence. and That, that was your choice, sir. That was your choice. I'm sorry, it wasn't my choice to be interrupted. Mr. And Teager, please finish. Just please, your time is up. Okay, somebody maybe can bring this up. Um, the attorney's bill shows a $30,000 retainer for Mr. Spaldino's firm. As I understand it, it's supposed to be a $15,000 retainer. Um, I'm not sure if you want to pay that or correct it next time. Thank but you. I would suggest this board Thank pay you. more attention to spending taxpayer dollars. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I got a couple of questions. Go ahead, buddy. Well, I just would like uh, uh, Mrs. Falzino to uh, this the two largest items under uh, law contracting expenses of 55 almost 59 grand and, and 22 7. Uh, can you On tell me what page is on there? Yeah, that's oh, it's page uh, six. Okay, so uh, Mr. Falzino yeah. has and the retainer for two months, not one. Okay. It, uh, it seems uh, that seems obvious, yeah. Hampshire three is the lawsuit by Hampshire Properties for money damages based upon the planning board's denial of this plan. Mm -hmm. um, Seagolo is a challenge by Mr. Teeker and Ms. McCrory to the denial of their appeal for a building permit issued to the Seagulls. All right. And that's and that's that's fifty fifty six thousand dollars fifty five no that's a that's no. a no, wait a minute nine thousand each of the items that's nine thousand oh got it, got it, got it. Are, okay oh, I see I see yes in the text Acosta is an action against the uh, police officer for an allegedly warrantless search and okay. thank you my you know, Fourth Amendment rights. Um, 
Yeah, you can find the environments is a big water accident that uh, we were trying to settle. The Goldstein foil litigation is a proceedings pursuant to Article 78 challenging the denial of a request for uh, records regarding the refusals under the ethics code Got it. that generated 52,000 documents in response over a five year period. Uh, to bias an action by one property owner against another property owner having to do with a building on the other part of the defendant's property. Mm -hmm. um, they, the property owner chose to sue the village as well. We had it dismissed on the first appearance of the court, but they also began second time. And then Children of America against ABT in an action to recover civil penalties for a, a builder who uh, lived himself and rented out another house without a certificate of occupancy for approximately a year. Yeah, I guess the point being that the level of litigious action. Yeah, yeah. um, um, all right, uh, another question I had, I, and this is just more informational for my point. I see that the um, street lighting cost is at $10,647. How much would that have been if we had not switched to LED? Does anybody know? Does anybody fill me in? I mean, uh, what are we what are we saving there? I think it would have been about twice as much because when we first got our credits for switching back in 2016 or 2017, I think I calculated there was like a, a round of either a 48 or a 52 percent reduction in our energy consumption. So that's and and that's, that's a recurring savings, and that's uh, that's yeah. worth worth noting. I, I can try and dig that e dig out that email. Yeah, I just I, I yeah. saw that. And I said, well, I wonder what it used to cost. So there, there you go. And um, how much carbon didn't go into the atmosphere? Well, there's that too. There's that too. And uh, all right, and one hundred and thirty-two thousand and change uh, for what's just a joint waterworks uh, UV treatment facility. What what is that? That, 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 that is different than the filtration plant. That was a yeah. project that uh, we're just finishing up now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Anybody else on the board? Okay. Tonight's claims are $1,977,180.67. Need a motion? So moved. Second. All the roll, please. Trustee Schwalings? Yes. 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 Lucas? Yes. Young? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes, thank you. Uh, the next up is the claims for this fiscal year. Uh, and tonight they amount to $232,318.75. Okay. Any questions or concerns on this fiscal year's claims? Okay, thanks from the board. Nope. Need a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, Sally, please. Trustee Rawlings. You didn't get up, Mr. Ticket. I'm not a mind. You didn't call to the audience. I was waiting, Tom. Come on. Sorry, don't raise your voice with me. If you oh, want to say something, okay. please just say it as you go. No, you, you, you clock has, your voice. clock hasn't something. You, you just yelled, "Come on, please, please said, make." I didn't. It's your. Please go ahead. Okay. My interpretation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um. And I would tell the board that the law says you're supposed to know what you pay for. Clearly, on the last audit, he did not know what some of those items were. Um, page 19, there's $9,600 in bills to Vinnie Kinstrike for t shirts. Seems like a lot of t shirts or very expensive t shirts. Do we know how many t shirts we bought or what we paid for? Them? Can I say? The t-shirts were for the Juneteenth celebration. Um, no, it actually says it's for the day camp. It's, it could have been for the day camp and a Juneteenth, but I know some t-shirts were printed for the Juneteenth celebration. Okay. Do we know how many t-shirts $9,600 bought? 
would say over 400 because there's a lot of campers. There was a lot of campers this year. Okay. I would say over 400 just based on the number of camps and having okay. ordered t-shirts for other camps. Page 26, Lori Lee Industries, South Barry Siphon Emergency Repair. Um, as I understand, this was a long standing. Um, was there some specific emergency? And I assume that this is another item where um, competitive procurement wasn't done to award the country. Residents should know you're spending money. You don't have a clue what it's for. And your staff apparently can't inform you. I mean, I find that astounding, especially after Mr. Barbario's long presentation about how they go over every item. Um, page one of 28. Paris Beach, $4,800 to do the tax anticipation note for the library. Will that be paid for by the library or is that the village's taxpayer responsibility? That's yeah, point we have to if we're paying for it. I don't think we've asked the library to pay for that. Okay, but I mean, is there, I understand that's your opinion on it. I mean, do we have, I mean, the taxpayers are happy, I think, to help out the library, but this seems like an unexpected expense and it would be appropriate if the library may help out. Thank you, sir, your time is up. Sally, is your buzzer not working? No, it's working. You didn't hear it? No, I didn't. Thank you. You're welcome. Need a motion on the uh, abstract of $232,318. Second. 75 cents. Yes. The roll. Rawlings? Yes. Yazeri? Yes. That's for you. Yes. That's what I put it Young? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. That's what I put it That's what I put it uh, hand these down to uh, Mr. Sarnoff down there, please. Thank you. Great. Uh, new business 4A. There's something I don't have any other business. Oh, resolution. Oh, I do. God. Re it was must have been, you know, wishful thinking. Resolution authorizing funding for development of maintenance and protection of traffic. Of traffic plans. This is for the. Uh, well, yeah. this is this is for the school. This is yeah. We discussed this at uh, work session. Work session. It was on the last agenda. Uh, we but we took it off because we've been waiting for uh, some material from AKRF in order to present to the board. And we have that material now. Yes, we do. Uh, for folks who are watching. Uh, we're doing a lot of sewer work around the Marinick Avenue School. The Marinick Avenue School is being used for co-op camp uh, this summer. And uh, we're, we're going to develop a, a plan so that the uh, children and the moms and dads who are dropping kids off for co-op uh, won't be uh, impacted by all the work. And uh, it'll be safe and uh, kids can egress and ingress without worrying about uh, getting in the way of the construction that's going to be going on around there. And we're doing the construction around there now, so it doesn't affect you know, the regular school year. So it, it, we had to do it one way or the other. Uh, and this is needed uh, sanitary sewer replacement in that area. No, 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 sorry, sorry, no, sorry. Replacement in that area. So I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution uh, 4A, resolution establishing needed parking on the 500 and 700 block of Marinick Avenue. All right. Uh, the merchants on that part of Marinick Avenue is north of the train tracks uh, have long been complaining about people leaving their cars there 
over the two hour limit and their customers not having a place to park. So what this is doing is the, as Mr. Sarnoff so eloquently say, if, if you don't put a price on parking, uh, people, uh, what do you, people- If you don't put a price if, on it, people treat it like it has no value. They don't treat it like it has no value. Yeah. Don't value it. So, so we, we are putting value upon it and hopefully people will turn over so that the merchants can then have business. Uh, so this is gonna cost us $80,000 approximately. We have $262,000 in a parking fund, uh, which is a fund that we uh, get when you know businesses open up and they can't, they can't uh, provide adequate parking on their property. Uh, so it's not actually gonna cost the taxpayers uh, anything and it's not gonna have to be capitalized. And I think we, we estimated that after we spend the $80,000 to put the meters in, it will pay for itself in like a year. Okay. One to two years. One to two years, okay. And we're allowed to use the parking fund, not for construction of spaces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we used it before. Is uh, Glenn Tippett. Glenn Tippett, Glenn. member of the budget committee and also Lord and master of Hill Street, but not here on either of those titles. Okay. Um, are we putting uh, meters in front of um, like where um, the uh, driving school is and and over there? Is that far at all? Um, no, it was it was between the five hundred and the seven hundred block, which would include that area. Uh, but you know, you have kind of limited parking over there to begin with. You know, um, I, I think the driving. I don't, I'm not positive. Is the driving school actually on Old White Plains Road, or is it on? Well, it's on Waverly and Don't the only reason I'm asking is that if you uh, put meters uh, to the corner there where the um, small uh, restaurant is, uh, where Center Avenue is, and you had meters there from eight to six, after six o'clock at night, you could possibly open that up to overnight parking. For the residents, and you don't have to worry about them being there in the morning because the meters would start. Because mm -hmm. right, right now you can park there, but you, you're not allowed to park there at three to five, probably uh, for the street sweep or, or such. Yeah. But, and you don't want people parking all day. But if you put meters there at eight o'clock, they got to be out of there anyway, or else they got to feed the meter and it's two hour parking. So you might be able to gain an extra 10 spots to the neighborhood and make it a plus plus. The only thing is I'm pretty sure that the sweeper comes by at like he does my Maryland cabin like 5 30 in the morning. Can we double check? Yeah, but we you can you can do it, you know, every other day or you know, you can we sweep one, one Avenue every day. Sweep. Yeah, no, it, it, we sweep Maryland Avenue every day. Okay. Yeah, and I think it, it would you'd be hard pressed to ask residents to say you can park here on this day, no. then park here on that day. Okay. And on, yeah, on the yeah. third Wednesday, you park here. Just just a suggestion. Yeah. Maybe, it's not a bad suggestion. No, it's not, yeah. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, anybody have any questions, concerns? Yeah. Like a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I have item 4B, uh, five different resolutions that were recommendations of the traffic committee uh, that we have to vote on them all separately. So the first one is establishing no parking restriction and a removal of the handicapped parking on Carroll Avenue. Anybody have any questions, concerns? Any motion? Any motion? Oh, so moved. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Second. Anybody have questions, concerns? Sally, please. No, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Establishing stop intersections on Barrymore Lane and Colonial Court. Uh, uh, this is putting stop signs at intersections is what they're supposed to mean. Yeah, the, yeah. the stop signs would go on on Barrymore Colonial. Yeah, and with as Barrymore. Yeah, oh, sorry. As they intersect the Taylor's Lane. Yeah, Barrymore. You have you have the two uh, legs of Barrymore, so right, one on each leg, for lack of a better term. Gotcha. Okay, makes sense. Two signs on each each street, right? Well, there'll be no. one sign, one stop sign. Oh, Ta oh, Taylor's yeah, Lane wouldn't be stopping. Yes. The, 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 the T intersection would stop. Okay. 
Any questions, concerns? We have uh, we've received a lot of complaints about Taylor's Lane yeah. over the years. I mean, kids what use about the kids use it to drag. Yeah, I move we do this. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution establishing a no parking restriction on North Barry Avenue. It's a stop sign on the west side of North Barry. No, I'm sorry, it's not a stop sign. It's a parking restriction on the west side of North Barry from a point. 175 suite north of the intersection with Brook Street to a point 10 feet north thereof on North Barry. Yeah, it's uh, you know, the restriction is because the resident uh, doesn't have enough room to oh, get wow. in and out of his, his driveway. Yeah. I'll remember this. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, hold on here. One second. I'm missing something. Okay, here they are. Okay. Uh, amending a time parking restriction on Monsignor Goodwine Avenue. Uh, does everybody have the resolution in front of them? Yeah, yeah the no parking restrictions on North Barry Avenue. I just did that. No, uh, North, North End Park. No, there is, there's two items for North Barry Avenue. So there's 412 North Barry and there's North, North Barry. Okay, and uh, so there's 4B3, right? Yeah, 4B4. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 4B4 also. Yeah, you're right. 4B4. Box. Just one has the box. So I have 4B4 as uh, serving alcohol in the uh, Park. Can I read it? Yeah, if you read it, please. So, resolved that the following amendment to Chapter 326, Vehicle and Traffic Law of the Code of the Village of Amarnock B, and is hereby amended as follows. Section uh, Section eighty Section um, eight parking prohibited at all times. North Barry Avenue, west side of the street from a point one seventy five yeah. feet north. That's the one we just did. And two Park Avenue, north side of the street from English Place to a point ten west feet thereof. Make that motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Um, Aye. So they just weren't parallel. Okay, the last one is four B five. Uh, Amending a time parking restriction on Monsignor Goodwine. Uh, Monsignor Goodwine East, 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday on school days uh, from New Street to Elliott Avenue. Uh, we're rescinding that and we're adding Monsignor Goodwine 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Fridays on school, school days uh, from New Street to Elliott Avenue. So they're just, uh, just they just, just pick up and drop off. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, 4C, resolution authorizing labor of the sound festival at Harbor Island Park. Uh, we had a presentation two weeks ago at the work session uh, from Matt Sullivan and a couple other gentlemen. <clears throat> we want to have a uh, music festival, a, 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 a uh, first class music festival with uh, you know uh, bands that tour on a regular basis around the country, uh, and at, locally, and locally, and have them uh, have a, a whole day at Harbor Island Park. Uh, they would pay the village uh, six dollars per attendee, and uh, pay for the uh, you know services that are needed to uh, facilitate their concert. So we thought it was a good idea. So this uh, resolution uh, gives them the ability to hold that uh, in twenty, you know, in early fall. And they haven't picked a day yet, but in early fall of twenty twenty four. So I'll make that motion. Second. Go ahead. Hold on a second. Were you folks here for something no, that they were here for? Donny Tom. The restaurant. Yeah, here we are. The restaurant? Okay. Have a good evening. Um, just a, a couple of questions with the uh, the festival. Um, gets the parking. Uh, who uh, gets um, 
who gets money for uh, the different concessions, what kind of concessions are going to be available. Yes, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I'm no, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it's when you have a festival like that, you, you have a, a lot of different sources of income, and you just have to uh, be completely aware of who, who gets what. You do have parking. Uh, normally, uh, if it's an all day festival, you have two setups you'd have a food setup, and you'd also have a complete setup with uh, vendors, whether it's, you know, t shirts or whatever else. So, so I used to go up to the uh, jazz festival up in Saratoga. Springs and you know it was an all-day festival and you know it, it, there was there was a lot of um, different vendors up there so you just have to be amazed I mean six dollars person a person it is is wonderful but if they're getting two hundred two hundred dollars a vendor and they put two hundred vendors in there it's not, it's not a vendor it's a, it's a it's a rock and roll concert I, I know it's rock and roll but if it's all day normally you have vendors at, at an event all day let me just. I don't well, want that's the question you should ask, Tom. I know, I understand, but they're they're just. I'm, trying, I'm giving you some context. They're they're taking basically lands of field. Yes. Okay. And we we haven't worked out the particulars yet. What we're proving here isn't the particulars or a contract. There'll be contracts to be worked out. This is basically just saying we approve of the idea. You could begin the next stage. Okay, that that's fine. Truth, truth, as long as you're aware, it's there. Without a doubt. Yeah, because it might be more than that $6. I, 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 mentioned, I, I mentioned the $6, Glenn, because that's in our code now. But okay. the, also, the village, one of the first things that the village did when they were trying to think about how, you know, really refine the budget committee and other requests so that how we charge for uses of the park, there they there's a, a way of figuring out how much it costs the village. So they'll pay a portion of ticket sales, but in addition to which they'll pay for, for what it costs us with police over time for parks department people. Mm -hmm. So so that the, the village will not, you know, lose, it won't cost when, the village money to have this event. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When the village used to have that beer concert. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you way under chart. We, we, well, those BM, before yeah. Murphy, right. uh, the, the, it, it was $5,000 for the whole weekend. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like I said, this I have to see something close to my heart because I've done so no, many, uh, so many shows and everything. I know what they they, they charge us as vendors, so Not sure. I just want to make sure that you know that it, that you know, as Lou would say, let's let's squeeze a few pennies. Okay, yeah. uh, Dana, yeah. we're going to get our cut. Thank you. But yeah, but the, appreciate it. The resolve clause in the resolution is it, it talks about supporting the concept, having the continued planning. And then coming back to right. the board to make formal presentations. Right. So we're gonna have to sign a contract. Yeah. All right. Uh call. Now you know what? All in favor. Aye. Aye. That's after nine o'clock. It's the all in favor rule. <laughs> <laughs> Item 4D, resolution authorizing street closing and serving of alcohol. Uh for the 2024 Sound Shore St. Patrick's Day Parade. We should all be so efficient. What? We should all be so efficient. They're yeah. planning. Yeah, they, the uh, the Patrick's Day Parade Committee gets on your, like the day after the parade about when are we going to get approval for next year? All right. Uh, okay, I'll make the motion. Second. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution authorizing funding of annual sewer investigation program. This is the CMO. Yes. Gina, you want to speak a little bit about the CMO? Okay, so is that, uh, CMO, uh, we developed a, uh, or the CMO has developed an annual sewer inspection program where we're uh, required to inspect 10% uh, of the uh, sewer pipes and manholes uh, on an annual basis for uh, 10 years, and that's a, an ongoing process. The uh, village maintains over 250,000 linear feet of sewage wow. sewer line, so 25,000 feet every year, and between the sanitary uh, sewer, correct, sanitary, and approximately between 180 to 200 manholes uh, per year. We've uh, obtained proposals from Arcadis and Fred Cook. Uh, Arcadis is the engineer. Fred Cook is the 
CCTV. Uh, my thoughts for this are to have Arcadis do this for the first year. Uh, next year, when I bring on an assistant engineer, we'll be doing this um, together. Yeah. And then eventually the third year is something that I'd like to retain in house. We may still need Fred Cook to do the inspection services, but we can certainly keep the engineering and the inspection in house. Yeah, that's that's so, good to hear. Okay, just for the folks uh, uh, watching at home or people who don't think very often about the sewers, uh, we have a dual system. In most of Westchester County, I think Yonkers has a combined system. Uh, dual system means we have one system for sanitary sewer. That's the, everything that comes out of your house, the shower, uh, the toilet, the sinks, and another system for the uh, stormwater, uh, which is obviously everything that hits the street. Uh, hopefully your, uh, your, your leaders on the, the outside of your house and any uh, storm system that you have inside your house goes into the storm sewer, not into the sanitary sewer. Because if it goes into the sanitary sewer, rain events uh, tend to make the sanitary sewer then overflow. And uh, we don't want that. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And I'll make this motion. I have two questions. Please. And then in the therefore, um, the, the now therefore be resolved, is the 2022 23 budget, I think. Yeah. And also, it's um, we're taking it out of the appropriated fund balance. So I guess we didn't put this in the budget this year. No, so we didn't include this. It wasn't calculated as part of the sewer fee because that's where we would normally uh, try to recoup the money from. So we'll uh, we'll incorporate that into next year's recommendation. So we're taking it just out of fund balance. Yeah. Okay. But it, so I think we need to again rely on our fund balance. So we can also with this look for. Um, Grants. Yeah. Like, I mean, before we've been able to, even if we pay for it, we've been able to look for grants and then read. I don't think we get grants for this. Yeah, this, this is a result of this is one of the things we're doing. Yeah, yeah, this is more maintenance related as opposed to capital. Well, it's also a requirement. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you know, again, if, if you know, we've gotten grants for capital work on our sewers, not necessarily yes, administrative that, that maintenance. Were, that were also involved yeah. in the settlement. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. 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 4F. Resolution authorizing execution of agreement for engineering, uh, survey, and design services for sewers replacement, metered areas 7, 9, and 10. Gino, you know, it's your time to shine, pal. Yes. So this is part of our phase two of our sewer rehabilitation. Uh, back in 2021, when our PADIS uh, conducted their infiltration investigation report for the meters seven, nine, and 10 areas, that's associated with the industrial, Marble Heights, Old Rhineck, Walsh, and Florence Park areas. Um, the CCTV uh, inspection clearly found significant deficiencies at 11 sewer seconds, uh, and they recommended a complete uh, replacement of these sections. Uh, some of the deficiencies included pipe collapses, holes, cracks, and infiltration of, uh, of water into our sanitary sewer systems. Uh, proposals were provided by uh, Spinelli uh, to survey the right of ways for these 11 locations, and Cal Sessions provided proposals for the engineering design services, permitting uh, production of bid specification documents, and approvals with the West County County Department of Health. Uh, Total linear footage for these 11 sections is approximately 1,500 linear feet. Um, in addition, two of the sections, Arcadis recommended reverse inspections because they were unable to uh, get to the second manhole. We attempted to do this with the CCTV truck that we call with the town of Maranek. They were unsuccessful, so the proposal here also includes two locations for Fred Cook to come in and obtain that necessary footage. And, uh, and our will evaluate it and then recommend uh, any possible additional landlords in that in two specific trees. I'll try to assign When you get the footage, make sure you keep it because we get that footage foiled. Correct. People like to see that. Well, I'm, yeah, all the footage is on my drive. Yes. <laughs> There's, there must be nothing on Netflix that night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hi, hey, can we play that tape again? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Uh, so I need a motion for that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Resolution authorizing execution of agreement for construction and inspection services for Mount Pleasant Avenue, school pedestrian safety design improvements. Everybody has this in front of them. My resolutions don't have what's it's supposed yeah, to be. That's it was, it wasn't in the packet. I know, but I, I got something else in there. Do you want this? Uh, anybody have this? That that brings questions, concerns. No. Should we explain it? I mean, it's Dan. Why don't you explain it? Um, we are soon to begin the drainage uh, repairs and sidewalk improvements around the Mamaroneck Avenue school area. Uh, we received CDBG funding for this community development block grant funding. Uh, we re required to have uh, on-site construction inspection and someone do conduct what's known as the Davis Bacon wage interviews uh, with the uh, laborers and uh, staff will be working on the project. Uh, and this is a proposal from Keller Sessions to provide that service. They provide the same services for our CDBG project last year. Uh, so they have some experience with that and we were happy with that. Uh, and uh, we're, we look forward to being in this work, uh, hopefully next week and fixing some of that drainage and putting some nice new sidewalks for the kids to walk on to get to school. Yep. Thank you. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Good. Okay, four. We're up to four H, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four G. Yeah, G. That was G. That was G. Yeah, yeah. We're on H. Uh, resolution. <laughs> hey, uh, resolution authorization to execute uh, First Amendment to agreement the Westchester County contract to extend the terms of the agreement to provide community developed block block grant funding. For the Mount Pleasant Avenue, Mamaroneck Avenue School Pedestrian Safety and Drainage Improvement Project. Uh, do we need to do that? No, this is the. Oh, no, this is the yes. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. <laughs> this is to, to extend the CDGB contract with the county, which expired in May, which the county is allowing us to go for another year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your assistance. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Resolution authorizing funding for new ball field equipment. Uh, two weeks ago, we had our, our friend, Mr. Jeff on the head of the Parks Department, uh, talk about uh, needing this piece of equipment to uh, level the playing field, uh, literally. Uh, at the ball fields and baseball fields in Harbor Island Park. And actually, just this past Saturday, I had a uh, call from a resident because we had a lot of rain on Friday night and the, they, they, they did the Little League field that morning, Saturday morning. And then they only had one piece of equipment so they couldn't do the softball field. So a softball parent uh, was calling me and uh, Jeff said, Mr. Mayor, that's why we ordered the second piece of equipment. So I don't know if you worked it out that way, but it worked out perfectly for why this should be uh, approved tonight. Uh, so I will make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh boy, this is another multi-layered one. Uh, item 4J, resolution authorizing capital purchase for fiscal year 23-24. Prisoner transport van. This is the first one. Prisoner transport van for the Village of Mamaroneck Police Department. Anybody have any questions, concerns on this one? Uh, 
This is a $90,000 van to transport the prisoners. 98. $98,000 van to transport the prisoners uh, to wherever where they got to go, probably to county lockup. Any questions or concerns? Yeah. Any motion? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next up, uh, we talked about all of this at work session too. A resolution to purchase a 75 yard compacted trailer. This is for the sanitation workers. Uh, when they empty the trucks, they empty it into a trailer and they compact it and then they take it to the, the uh, county. Uh, so they need a new one. Uh, I'll make the motion. A second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, resolution authorization to purchase one yard horse trailer jockey. <laughs> uh, and this is uh, not a human. It it it, it is a, uh, a a a piece of equipment used to move the trailers around without having to hook up the uh, the the tractor to the big truck to them. It's too big. The regular yeah. truck. Okay, and this is for one hundred thirty three thousand eight hundred ninety seven thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars. I need a motion. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next one. Uh, authorization to purchase new engine for the Harbor Master boat. Uh, the Harbor Master was in today and uh, let us know that his uh, engines are shot and they need to be replaced before they are inoperable. Yeah, on uh, this one, could you just um, add uh, uh, delivery fiscal 25? Because he said it was going to be 54 weeks. That way, you know, you're not going to be paying, uh, paying for it this fiscal year. It's going to be paid for next fiscal year. There, there is a resolve. Okay. There is a resolve in there. That says that there's an approximate 54 week lead time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's in there, right? Just okay. for more clarification. And, and, and that would be for the uh, few trucks, too, that wants to Yeah. The, the, the garbage trucks. Just so you have a better idea of yep. the expenses that are going to be coming up. It's, it's in there. Okay. So thank you, though. Thanks, uh, I need a motion. So second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Authorization to purchase two Mac. <laughs> the, the two uh, big garbage trucks. Uh, you don't need to know all the classifications of them. Uh, the uh, the head of DPW, uh, James Barney, was in here this afternoon, and he talked to us about the need for these trucks. They were replacing an 18-year-old and a 20-year-old truck, both of which uh, were damaged during the flood of uh, Ida. And uh, this is another one, as, as Mr. Uh, Teeker pointed out, that has a huge lead time. And uh, if we don't order them now, you know, we, we're in danger of uh, not having trucks. And uh, these trucks that were underwater have uh, gone over extensive repairs and they, they, they've been breaking down much more, much more frequently than they should have because it's, you know, the, the water is the most corrosive uh, uh, thing you can do to a piece of uh, mechanical equipment. And they were underwater, not just wet, they were underwater. Uh, so I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. The next up is item 4K, resolution funding generator for repair of transfer station building at transfer station facility. Okay, next to DPW is the, the village of Mamaronix transfer station. Uh, the electrical service for the transfer station uh, was damaged during the flood and literally fell off the wall. Uh, so what they have to do now is they have to replace uh, the electrical service to the transfer station, and then they have to add an automatic transfer switch. And what and the generator, what, what the automatic transfer switch does at the transfer station is when the electricity goes out, you know, if we have another flood, or God forbid, or Con Ed has a, uh, you know, a malfunction, uh, that switch automatically transfers uh, 
to the generator. The generator switches on, so we won't lose any uh, you know, service to handle our garbage in case of a flood or a you know, long-term outage. Uh, as, as we talked about at the work session, uh, during uh, the flood, we were able to get the transfer station running back again. And uh, we picked up, James said, in the first week after the flood, three months worth of garbage, the equivalent of the village of Mary, three months worth of garbage. And that was, you know, through the strenuous work of our crews and the help of our friends around us who sent, uh, who sent uh, their, their crews uh, to help out. So without the transfer station, we would have, it would have been a, a much more difficult task. It was already a difficult task. It would have been almost an impossible task. So with that long prelude, I will make the motion. Second. Questions, concerns? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Resolution in support of Medicare for all. This is something that came up uh, at the work session. Uh, you know, it, it, this is basically saying that uh, every person in Mamaroneck, every person in New York State, every person in Westchester County, and every person in the United States has the right to have health care. That health care is a right, it's not a privilege. Uh, would it cost? Yeah, there would be a cost involved to it, but you know what? Uh, some kid in Montana needs a heart operation. Uh, you know, I'm willing to pay for that because you know what? That's what good human beings do. Uh, you know, some old lady in Mamaroneck uh, can't afford her medicine. Well, I think we should be able to, to help them out. This is the, in a lot of ways, the richest country in the world and we have the most backward healthcare system. So I will make that motion. Oh, um, so second. And I, I don't expect that this will, uh, you know, have a great impact. And uh, in the halls of Congress, they will uh, right away get on this. But you know, you have to sometimes uh, <laughs> you have to sometimes say where you are in this world. Uh, Sally, roll the roll. Trustees Rowling. Yes. Yazuri. Yes. Young. Yes. Lugan. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Yes. Aye. Four M. Resolution accepting donations for the Marine Education Center. Donation. Uh, yes, this is a donation of $1,400 from the Sandpiper Fund of New Rochelle donated to, to the Marine Education Center. Uh, and we thank them. And I think, is this for the touch tanks too? No. What's this for? It's for children in New Rochelle to be able to go to the Marine Education Center. Okay. So we'll pay for that. Oh, great. That's really terrific. Uh, I, 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 as I say every time that I mention Marine Education Center, if uh, you you haven't been, you should really go down. It's it's down uh, in the East Basin, uh, right past the first parking lot on the left. Uh, they have volunteers there. They have uh, interns, and it's run by uh, a great village employee, our naturalist uh, Kyle, uh, and uh, they they really connect you to the environment around you. And it, it's really a great uh, learning tool. Uh, if you if you are, have your kids down at Harbor Island Park uh, playing soccer or baseball, and you have a younger kid there who's getting a little antsy, it's a great way to uh, divert the younger child. And you know, before you know it, without their uh, without their resistance, they're learning something. Uh, so I will gladly make that motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right, 4N, resolution accepting bench donation from Richard and Edie Roth, should be Rick, Rick is his name, Rick and Edie Roth and Rosanna Mayalo. I will first start with Mr. and Mrs. Roth, uh, donating a bench and a plaque uh, to the village of America to be placed in Harbor Island, honoring Orienta. So I'll make this motion. All in favor? Aye, and it's a gift of $2,329.80. The price of benches have really gone up and we give them at cost. Uh, but it's a, I think when I first started May, I think it was $1,400. How it's much was this bench? 
Okay. It used to be forty. So, like in the in the five and a half years, it's gone up almost yeah, a grand. Yeah, we're paying like twelve hundred. Yeah, it's gone up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the next up, we voted on that, right? Yes. Yeah, right. The rest up is uh, Rosetta Mayalo, and if I'm mispronouncing that, please forgive me. Is desirous of donating a bench and a plaque in Mamaroneck uh, to be placed in memory of Antoinetta Albanese Mayalo, and that's the same cost. And we thank. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Mayalo, uh, for I, I assume donating a, a bench in her mom's memory. So I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, resolution revising date of street closure for Juneteenth event. Juneteenth was supposed to be on June 19th, no, on June 17th. 17th. On June 17th. Yeah. And uh, it was very, we had a very bad weather yeah. forecast. And since they're repainting uh, the Black Lives Matter Memorial, uh, it, it was wise to uh, postpone it. And it's being postponed and the resolution should read uh, to July 8th, 2023. I know that's why it should, I said it should read. And so that amendment uh, saying July 8th, 2023 with that amendment, I will make the motion. Uh, you want to say something? No, I was going to say something. <laughs> Make that motion second. But Nora said it too. So. Okay. Uh, all in yeah. favor? Aye. 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 Can you just explain what Juneteenth is for people who don't know? I'll let Alani do that. Oh, lovely. <laughs> you want me to? Go ahead. Take it away. Okay. Uh, and I, I'm open to being corrected. Uh, well, at the me. at the end of the Civil War, uh, the the last group of African Americans to be informed uh, that the uh, the war is over and they are now free. And the, uh, I don't think the Thirteenth Amendment, yeah, the Thirteenth Amendment had passed outlawing slavery in the United States. And this happened on June nineteenth, uh, eighteen sixty five, and that was a date that was celebrated uh, in, in African-American culture in a lot of parts of this country. But, you know, uh, I didn't know about it until a few years ago. And as I demonstrated uh, before, I have a, a pretty good working knowledge of history, but there was so much uh, African-American history that has not been taught in our schools. And uh, this is a good way of beginning the process of informing us on a complete history of the American experience. I will note that they were enslaved Africans, not African Americans, because at the time they weren't even you're deemed right. American. You're, you're, you're exactly right. I'll just make that correction. And I will accept the correction. <laughs> uh, I, I, need, I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution, de declaration of surplus vehicle and authorization to sell uh, the vehicle by auction. And this is a uh, Ford uh, F-350 2004, only 29,000 miles on it, lightly used, lightly used uh, driven very slowly through the park uh, by, by our careful crew. Uh, the uh, bottom is rusted out, but besides that, it's running perfect. Like a Flintstone car. <laughs> it's a Flintstone car. Yeah. Uh, I will make the motion to sell that through auction. And we do this with, with all our surplus vehicles, right? Thank you. Dan, we do this through all our surplus vehicles? Yes. That's correct. Right. Sorry, I think I made myself laugh. <laughs> the real made of this Louis like second before you get to respond. All in favor. All right. All right. Four Q. Resolution scheduling a public hearing on PLQ and uh, resolution administration of public housing. Bob, you want to quickly? Sorry, Glenn. Mayor, this law amends the local laws that affect the law that delegates the management of the village of the rural housing program to the town of America. Places in the village or the village of the designee 
which allows for the village to uh, retain a, an agency or consulting firm to manage this program. Okay, and just this program, uh, the village had a housing office years ago. We devolved it into the town of Mamaroneck and consolidated with them. And they took care of placement of our affordable housing uh, units up until a couple of years ago when the, uh, the employee in the town of Mamaroneck who did that test uh, retired. And the town, I don't know, uh, just decided they weren't going to do it anymore. So now uh, that's coming back to us. And we will run our own uh, affordable housing program in terms of when a developer, uh, when a developer builds an affordable unit in his development, uh, we will help place a uh, person who is qualified in that uh, unit. And we have some open and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get people in them quickly because it's, it's a shame to have uh, affordable units uh, languishing like that when there are so many people who could benefit. So I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Or R. Resolution authorizing the serving of alcohol at the Emelin Theater concerts in the park. Uh, the Emelin throws a few great concerts every year uh, in the park this year. They're throwing two, July 19th and August 9th. Uh, and it greatly benefits the village and uh, enhances the cultural atmosphere of the village. Uh, but this will allow them to, uh, you know, sell some beer and wine to recoup some of the costs that they have of putting on these great shows for us. And anytime alcohol is sold in Harbor Island Park or, or served in Harbor Island Park, uh, you have to have the permission of the Board of Trustees. So I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. And I believe that comes to the end of our agenda tonight. So the next up, the mic again, is the invitation to address the board round two. Oh. Thank you, Len. Oh. So. Len Tippett, if you don't know who I am, you're new to the village. A <laughs> um, couple of uh, things. Um, we're going to be discussing in the future um, affordable housing. And I think um, what we uh, one of the things that we need to do is stop using percentages and just develop what the actual numbers are. You you sit here and go forty percent of eighty percent of average income, and you get teen rolliitis. You know what teen rolliitis is? Is when the eyeballs roll to the back of the head when the parent is talking to a teen. <laughs> People just don't understand it. What they would understand is, you know, we have we have units that, you know, if you're making 47,000 and you're single, they're available. If you're making uh, 80,000 and you're a family of four, they're available. Nobody understands 40%, 80%, 60%. They understand solid numbers. On the uh, affordable housing, the other thing we need to do is actually have a complete list. If we don't already have it, we should know um, how many um, affordable units we have um, from uh, from builders that are required. We should know how many uh, houses Washington builds this. They have forty housing units. We should know how many um, uh, um, if there's any left controlled. Uh, units and any um, New York State um, stabilized apartments left in the village. We should have a complete list of any and all affordable housing units in the village. Okay, let's go over to the uh, park quick. Um, we need to update a couple of the, the rules in the park. Number one, no barbecue, uh, and not no barbecue, no picnicking. Unless Yogi Bear is sitting with Boo Boo, everybody in the park mm -hmm. is basically picnicking. The only thing they don't have is a picnic basket. You know, you know, just you know, what are you actually allowed to do? You know, can can I can I um get a, a fully catered um with uh with uh, six uh, hot foods all in a row on the picnic tables? 
you know, are there any limits? Do you want any limits? Or is it, you know, we'll be happy to let you go and do what you want. We just, you know, we want you to clean up. The second thing is, and I see him relaxing this a little bit, is you're getting a lot more uh, people doing pickup games in the park. And I don't want to see the park rangers or anybody else chasing people just because they're doing a five-on-five -five pickup game of soccer or volleyball or mm -hmm. something else. If you want to restrict it that, if you are an organized league with a referee and such like that, that you have to get a permit, that's fine. But for people to just, you know, a bunch of group of friends to get together who want to, you know, kick a soccer ball between cones, whether it's in Columbus Park or the harbor, or they want to put up a volleyball net in Columbus Park, and six people want to play. We shouldn't be chasing those people. We should be encouraging those people to use them. My final one, I realize my time is up. Uh, I encourage the board, please announce all the great events that are coming out. Give the dates. Tell us like, what, what, the, what, what, what the events are. When, when is the Tiki? When, when exactly are uh, the um, movie concerts? Uh, if they need any help putting in flyers, I'll walk into every store to put a flyer. This is one of the greatest assets of this entire village. And like I said, last year we had a fireworks display. And it was a brilliant fireworks display. Nobody was there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will just add that's something that I was thinking about in terms of the park laws and that I was going to bring up soon. So thank you for mentioning it. The yeah, very first thing I brought up. Just, I and and the, the box uh, recreation committee is working on revamping the rules for the box. Yeah. They're really strict. And ignored. They're not really strict. They're you numerous know, and, and, and universally ignored. They're strict and they were strategic. Stark? Robert Stark said about um, I was here earlier and don't know all there is to know about Don Hill and the restaurant and all the facts. But what I do know is that I saw over 20 men and women in this room who are without jobs. And it seems to me um, it, it's difficult for them to be at a week's salary, a month's salary. And what I heard is that the restaurant is going through a process, whatever that is. It seems to me that the village should be able to kind of cut some corners here and sit down with whoever is involved here and resolve the situation. Why wait? Well, why has this been delayed? And I emphasize again, if nothing more than for the sake of men and women who are without, who are without paychecks. So I urge the village to try to resolve the situation as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, okay. Uh, report from the village manager. We have no report tonight. Oh, Dan? Um, well, I, I mentioned the, uh, our drainage improvement, our drainage repair and sidewalk projects around the school beginning hopefully next week. Uh, we expect to have an update, hopefully sometime this week from the town of Maranek about the Waverly Avenue Bridge. Uh, they've said definitely not before July 5th that they'll start, but uh, we should hear something sometime this week, and I'll make sure that's, that gets communicated. And I'll, I'll let uh, someone else speak about the several events that we have going on for the next board meeting. Yeah, so we, we, we put out a, uh, a report every Friday about events going on in the community. It gets uh, emailed, it gets texted, it gets put online. Uh, I have the Arts Council in, by, the, by themselves and in conjunction with the Emlyn are organizing, have organized five concerts, July 7th, July 21st, and July 28th are all small concerts at seven o'clock. The first July 7th is Columbus Park, um, and it's the African Music Mercenaries. July 21st is uh, Florence Park, and it's Carlos Jimenez, and July 28th is at the Poetry Garden, and it's Alexander and Slepovich duo, and their it's their theme is world music. And then on the 19th of July, 
in Harbor Island. There's a big, a big bandstand from the county. There's Broadway on the Sound. And August 9th in Harbor Island, there's a Springsteen tribute band. And those are all at 7 p.m. So that's, and that those are all on the website um, and on the Arts Council's pages. I was on the um, county municipal conference call uh, earlier today. And uh, the, the uh, county exec and, and his folks are asking for information for all uh, all village and local events, so they can publicize them countywide on their on their website. So, so you just tell Robert what? to send them yeah, an email. Yeah. So I just uh, that just came up a couple of you know a few hours ago. So mm -hmm. they they they, they want to do that because obviously a lot of people that come to these things may not be people who live here that might want to come here to uh, to see something. So. Well, in in line with that, the Tiki Party, the sixth annual Tiki Party, is at Harbor Island on July 14th, starting at 6, 6 p.m. Rain date is the next day, July 15th. Outdoor movie night will be June 10th, playing um, something about Buzz Lightyear. Can't really see it because it's really small. Um, July 14th is Pirates of the Caribbean. August 5th is Puss in Boots. Well, September 9th is Super Pets, um, and these are all at Harbor Island. And the last one, because we already talked to concerts in the park, is the Block Party, and that is July 26th from 7 to 10, and it'll be on Romantic Avenue in the village, downtown village. Thank you. Next up. Uh, oh, the fireworks. Oh, the uh, parade is Wednesday, prayerfully. July 4th yeah. with St. Thomas Orchestra playing concert. And then the fair will be from then, from Wednesday till the carnival. Not tomorrow, starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, yeah, that's tomorrow. Well, yeah. You used to start with the parade. <laughs> what? East? You used to start with the parade. Wow. Next up is a report from the clerk treasurer. Yes, Mayor. Just a reminder the first half property taxes are due on or before July 3rd. And file for the record is a notice of defect on the north side of Pine Street. That is all. Thank you, Augie. Uh, report from the village attorney. There are three local laws to report on tonight that were filed and became effective on June 9th. The first is local law eight, which is the local law regarding the safety and maintenance of utility poles. Second was local law nine, which is the local law regarding the administrative security of zoning laws. And the third is local law 10, which is the local law involving motels and the duties of motel tenants. Very good. And we have minutes of commissions, boards, and committees. <coughs> minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting. Regular meeting of April 10th and May 22nd. Minutes of the Zoning Board meeting of June 1st, 2023. Minutes of the Board of Ethics of April 19th, 2023. Minutes of the Planning Board meeting of March tw uh, May 24th, 2023. Minutes of the Recreation Parks. Uh, Parks and Recreation of April 20th and May 3rd, and the Minutes of the Traffic Committee of May 9th. Uh, before we adjourn tonight, uh, tomorrow is uh, a primary election day. You can vote in your usual uh, voting locations, uh, and uh, it's important to participate in democracy. So, and this is a, the only uh, race is a Democratic trustee primary in the Village of America. So uh, with that, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's that. <laughs>